All right, now it's time to get into Raw, September 25, 2000, otherwise known as the debut of Raw on TNN. TNN. <laughs> uh, we all rest. We, <laughs> more Raws are coming. <laughs> Raw is what? <laughs> Before we get into that, let's take a look at what was going on in the wrestling world with the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. We got one here from September 18th, 2000. ECW, I put this in here because we just watched him on TNA. ECW has expressed some interest in Michael Shane, who has already uh, been working some prelims for the company and worked for WCW this past week, who is the nephew of Shawn Michaels. Oh, uh, I would never know that. They've never, I've never heard that before. <laughs> Me either. Wow, that's weird. weird. <laughs> uh, and they're also interested in Teddy Hart, the nephew of Bret Hart, with the idea of feuding them because it's the nephew of Shawn versus the nephew of Bret. Which they I could have, they could have saved Teddy Hart. <laughs> Dude, they could have saved what? Teddy Hart. 400 times fucking over, In ECW? Man. Is this what you're talking about? Is it going to happen in ECW? <laughs> yes, this was going to be an ECW. Brett angle. versus the nephews of Brett and Sean in ECW. I'm sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds insane. <laughs> that would have been fucking nuts. Yeah, dude, Teddy Hart could have been. You're right, James. They, I mean, ah, maybe. I don't know if ECW could have, but somebody could have, right? Somebody. Anybody? Hello? Anybody want to do that? <laughs> put, him the, put him in the Fed with the Hart Foundation? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, they, he got signed to be put in the Hart Foundation with fucking Tyson Kidd and. Uh, What's his name? Davy Boy. And then uh, they told him to specifically to not do like three things during a dark match <laughs> where he was being scouted. <laughs> they told him like... And he did all of them? Yeah, don't do a flip, don't do a promo, and don't curse. So the first <laughs> thing he does as their opponents are making them the entrance, he does that springboard shooter to the floor. <laughs> he grabs the mic and says, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> and then they fired him. Well, of course they fucking well, fired no, you. Come on, come on. If Vince was there, we'd be like, I like this guy. <laughs> He's got so much fun. There's something about this guy. <laughs> yeah, that I was definitely a JR that. call, probably. Yeah, I bet it was. That's fucking insane, man. There's Johnny Ace like, was definitely ringside. He said, get this fucking guy out of here. Get this fucking goof out of this well, fucking place, man. I don't man. know about that one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, just, I don't know. Just the promo. <laughs> not working for me. You don't fucking uh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go harass a bunch of people now. <laughs> good, good shooter, though, kid. Yeah, good. Uh, good. <laughs> that looked pretty good. <laughs> May, maybe one day you work for the WWE. Nice fucking sequence. I like that shit. <laughs> just not uh, today. <laughs> reminds me of the things that Mrs. Baba used to put on. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you get rid of a couple of the cats, and maybe, maybe you leave women alone, and maybe, maybe you work for up. us. <laughs> just, just, Stop doing shut just up. get a fucking clue. Wake, 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 wake up, wake up, you fucking idiot! It changes his voice. Maybe you get a get a clue. Maybe you wake up or something, buddy. <laughs> It's like Dusty Rhodes. God damn. You guys have to watch Lockdown. You have to watch Lockdown on our Patreon. It's unbelievable. There's too many references to clue, Dede. WCW News. This one's for you, boys. Since people from time to time ask about Dustin Runnels, he is still under contract. <laughs> Everyone has been asking, which is like something that a lot of people don't know. People, but. Okay, again, can we ask which is the best one? Do you know? I don't know what the best Dustin Runnels gimmick is, Tony. I wish there was a way we could fucking find out, though. I just want to know. Uh, Maybe one day. Well, he's still under contract, and there's no explanation as to why he's not around. Russo wanted to bring him in with a gimmick similar to Gold Dust, <laughs> and he's been waiting for a startup, do you? Yeah, I have an explanation. <laughs> What's that? What are you thinking He of? stinks like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> My pussy stinks. <laughs> <laughs> not letting this guy anywhere near this shit. Well, we Dusty's talk- booking now, so that's all good. <laughs> We've talked about the ICP shoot with them talking about him, right? That he was a weird fucker. No, I don't think so. I don't think we've yeah, dude. About when ICP was in WWF, Goldust would like fuck with them. So like, I think one time they were walking down the hallway and he's sitting on the floor, and he, they, you know, they say, "Hey, hey, Mister Goldust, how are you?" And he he looks at him and he says, "My pussy stinks." <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he shaggy too much. Yeah, he would, I'd walk by him and he'd say stuff weird shit like, I eat poop. <laughs> <laughs> you know the best so word is? It's like, he's not the type of guy that's gonna lie about that kind of thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, this is, this is real shit. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> definitely fucking happened, man. From the Observer, September 25th, 2000. Meltzer writes, the only real thoughts uh, I had coming out of Thunder on September 13th, besides being kind of numbed by the bad acting. Good lord, somebody send Tylene Buck to acting school 
and fast and please <laughs> all caps somebody release Mike Awesome from that contract he made with the devil all those years ago that allowed him to be 290 pounds and do toe pace for 10 years without suffering a career ending injury but at the end of the 10 years he has to take on a gimmick worse than the red rooster <laughs> 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 which gimmick is he in right now 70s oh man yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, he was real passionate. <laughs> Please, somebody. <laughs> Literally, if if it wasn't Russo booking, he would have been fine. I think he probably would have been the top guy there. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, right. especially when everyone else left, I assume he probably would have taken that top spot pretty quick. He was so goddamn good. We can't talk about it anymore, though. It's um, like yeah, it's we can't every, we can't say we Mike can't, Awesome man. is good anymore. We've already said <laughs> it a million fucking times. You already know. You already fucking know this. Uh, here we go. The situation on Dustin Runnels. I know you guys have been asking. I just want to make sure to come back around here because you were asking. Yeah, sure. Is that they Everybody were going to been. bring they were going to bring him back as you guessed it, platinum, a takeoff on the gold dust character. But WWF threatened a lawsuit and they backed off and now have no ideas for him. So he's sitting at home getting paid and does some indie stuff and works for his father's promotion. So WCW Goldust was going to be platinum. That was the gimmick. I feel like I remember would, that for some he reason. He would have just been silver. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't eat poop. He drinks pee. <laughs> and his balls stink. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I see was there. You told yeah, you're right. They were Holy there. Get fucking shit, by him. man. Yeah, you're right. We're right. <laughs> <laughs> coming into dark carnival stuff and gold dust. I <laughs> poop. Poop, poop, poop. <laughs> he's not at home. Smell he's, my balls. He's not at home. He's backstage your ass at ICP. <laughs> <laughs> He just follows him around their entire career. <laughs> Un- leave. Unbelievable. <laughs> Dude, yeah, please I leave shit. Violet J alone. Please leave him alone. Hey, That's ooh, a good ooh, man. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, shit, yes, shit, sir. shit, yes, shit, shit, shit. Right. Yes, Mr. Rhodes. <laughs> yes, sir, Dust. Yes, Mr. Platinum. <laughs> Uh, at one point backstage in Nitro, Conan reportedly handcuffed himself to the Disco Duck to keep Disco from bringing it out on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just, I that's hate fuck. ducks. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, duck. Uh, WWF News, the Taz character is supposed to be based on a schoolyard bully. It's supposed to be based. <laughs> Taz is supposed to be based. <laughs> You know, come, come on, son. Yeah, yeah, what the fuck you know, is wrong with you? Bass. <laughs> <laughs> you want a fucking base? <laughs> he was supposed to be based on a schoolyard bully who tries to bully people around, but when the baby face stands him up, he backs down. I hate this. I hate that they did this. That's why they put him in a tracksuit like a schoolyard bully. Yeah, they, made, they try to make like it look janitor. fatter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it for the uh, the news at the time. And let's talk about Raw, the TNN debut. All right. Now it's time to get into the debut of Raw on TNN. That's my life in a box, in a box, in a life in a box. My life in a box. <laughs> Dude, so I, I was like, damn, no cold open. Uh, no. You know, no recap or anything for the the grand opening on TNN here. Yeah, no, like, um, intro to WWF or anything. I guess they assume everyone knows what the fuck this is. But then I realize it's because the opening town hall goes 25 minutes. It is so, so long. It is so long. It is maybe a record-setting long on this podcast, this fucking opening I segment, I couldn't believe right? it was still going. Yeah, I was like, damn, everyone <laughs> keeps coming out. I'm like, holy fuck, man. Like, is yeah. this the whole show or something? <laughs> Yeah, it's just, we just talked the whole time. Um, when they did the intro at the beginning, by the way, it, I, it it's obviously version one of this, or at least it feels like it, because there's so many of the shots in the intro that I don't recognize. I was like, I don't. Some of these uh, like don't feel like the iconic raw intro shots. Yeah, that's what I, wrote. I wrote, said. Something doesn't seem right with this intro. I don't know what it is, but yeah, yeah I think it was right. just yeah unfamiliar shots. There was one of Tori doing a splash off the top to the floor through a table i was like that is fucking crazy i don't remember that happening that's <laughs> awesome they should have put the tnn guy in there dude I, when does the tnn guy debut i i am unfamiliar i actually I don't familiar. know yeah i think it was is around the later? time of the invasion because booker t was in the commercial for the tnn guy oh he was cool he had jeans was they were, were, were they still the nashville network right now tony and then they don't change to the national network until tnn guy 
Uh, I think so. The because I th- I think it was see. like the rebrand, right? Was like that was a big deal for them. Like the re- yeah, that's okay. why they got that's why they got the um the guy or whatever. Dude, TNN TNN man just looks like John Cena. <laughs> like, he does look like John Cena, yo. He's dope <laughs> same as same outfit. Yeah, he's nuts. Well, looking. September twenty fifth is when they renamed the National Network. Was oh, it this, this episode? episode? Oh the wow! So this is the, the new TNN. Wow. Okay. In two thousand, Viacom reduced. Uh, whatever. Uh, acquisition of the WWF programming decided to refocus TNN. And the network renamed the Nas- National Network. So it was like getting the WWE, WWF was like part of their was re-brand. the part of the change. Wow. Okay. I guess later they were the new TNN. Um, yeah, right. They were. That's what they, they they became the new TNN. That's probably around the time that like Booker T, like the I assume like two thousand invasion shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, real quick, just I don't know if we're gonna be able to talk about Spike TV too much in this episode, so I just want to get off at the top. Okay, Spike TV was based as hell, Dude, bro. Spike TV was Spike crazy. Was sick, Shout man. out to Thousand Ways to Die, bro. Yeah, oh my God. They Dude, lost the man like show was crazy. Man show should not have been a real thing. Like that shit was crazy. Yeah, that was Ziggy unbelievable. Ziggy Zaggy Zaggy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what was that one joint? MXC is that what it was? MXC oh, was MXC awesome. Was so yeah, good. MXC yeah. was super sick. There's it's a still... Twitch channel that just shows that all the time. By the way, yeah, they got something like that still in Japan rocking. You know that? Oh, I feel like we, we saw, saw advertisements shit. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on the train. Yeah, which is crazy. Damn, I'm trying to. What else was on Spike? There definitely was other. Bar re- T N A. Yeah, <laughs> dude. What about Stripperella, bro? Come on. Oh uh, yeah, come on, man. That's the real. Oh, fucking Ultimate Fighter was on there too. That was fucking crazy for a while. Oh yeah, that's, here's the top, that's just true. Here's the top shows: uh, Ink Master, Redemption, MXC. Oh Beer my Mountain God, State. Living Moss, Ink Master, <laughs> Living Moss. That's the real. Time. Auction Hunters, Thousand Ways to Die, Deadliest Warrior. Remember Deadliest Deadliest Warrior. Warrior. Yeah, I do remember that. Dude, the Joe wow. Schmo show. Remember Joe that? Joe Schmo is nuts. What yeah, is going on? Oh, yes. That's crazy. Wow. Dude, they're bringing that back. Stripperella Wait, now? also is on there. They're doing another Joe Schmo show like now. There's I don't no know if way. it's on or but Wait, they're filming it. Yeah. Really? On what same network? Const- I don't know. I got to look it up, but it's the well, same it's concept. Well, it's not for <laughs> <laughs> Oh, also Ren and Stimpy's adult party cartoon. We, can't we talked that about that recently. We did. I feel like yeah, that yeah. Shit Gary was the crazy. Rat. <laughs> that, shit, that shit was definitely better when it wasn't an adult cartoon. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah it the was. adult cartoon. They went too yeah. crazy. Yeah, you're right. That's a good way of putting it. Like the, the straps came off and then they should have stayed on. Yeah, you're right. James. I want to watch Joe Schmo now, man. Oh, I Joe Schmo. T- Dude, TBS, very funny. Joe Schmo show. <laughs> the new one? <laughs> yeah. Wow. What's it coming out? There's no way uh, that shit's worth a shit, is there? No fucking chance. Yeah. But I'll the first it. season right. only worked because of the guy that was on it. The first guy. It was guy. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was awesome. But the other, I don't know. Dude, the Ultimate Fighter was such a big deal for Spike. It was like the I ratings. The I, I remember reading about the ratings even back then. And it was just like unfucking real Like the surge was so nuts back then. That saved UFC. And, and then, of course, Surge was also on TNA. You hit it from both sides. You get two Ws. You get everything. You just get it all here at Deadlock. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah, so we start <laughs> off here. We have the Stone Cold Steve Austin Town Hall. What? No, and not what yet, dude, I guess. Dude, it is not only the Steve Austin Town Hall, <laughs> but it is the Chris Benoit Town Hall. It is the Mick Foley Town Hall. The Kurt Angle Town Hall. <laughs> It's everybody and anything you could think of. We got to talk about it. It is. I legit in my notes. I had to like, se- I usually separate segments just by segment. I had to legit cut this into like three or four different parts because of yeah, how it's long a ton. It yeah, but um, Steve much. Austin looks fucking awesome here. This is like does- six Steve Austin, man. Comes out Hellraiser merch, gold chain, gold watch, camo Dude. hat, shorts. Fucking he's ready. <laughs> Knee brace over jean shorts. <laughs> yeah, that, that fucking... dude. The jorts are so far up his shit. Like that is so. They <laughs> actually crazy. get higher up as time goes on. I don't know if anyone knew that, but they continue it, to rise. See, I feel like that's right. I feel like he definitely. I, I think at some point in like you know when he started doing it, like what maybe ninety seven, he started wearing those or whatever. Maybe ninety six. They were definitely high, and then they get shorter, and then they come back up. There's like a weird double knee brace is where they start getting crazy high when he has double <laughs> he's knee got brace. It. He's got yeah. it. Yeah, when he's they like, have to uh, crazy up when he's like GM or whatever. Right? Don't they get really high? When yeah, he's GM they as do well? for sure. Dude, yeah. as you, like you said, James, this shirt is awesome. It has the skull on the front with the flames. It kind of looks like the shirt we had, but it's not. The he same had a whole one. line of stuff like this that was I think it was only available on like steveaustin.com or stuff oh, like that. Yeah, 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 he had like on, a 
kick-ass line of merch. On the back of it, it says, bye-bye, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember reading something at some point that, like, he made the merch and then cut a deal with WWE that allowed him to get an even bigger oh. cut of the merchandise. I don't know if this is true or not, so don't, like, hold me to no, it. No, no, no. He definitely designed all of his merchandise. He, yeah, he I, I was, he I was pretty sure that, that this was. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know about the cut thing. That probably sounds right because he designed it. You yeah, know, why wouldn't sure he get yeah. a higher cut? But he was the one who was like, yeah, this is badass merch. And he wanted to make sure that it was cool. Cause like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and his was always the best, too. It was. Yeah, it was fucking sweet. You can see one piece of confetti fall from the sky here and land on his, like, shoulder during the entrance. <laughs> He's probably talking to you, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I think you can actually hear Jerry Lawler, like, accidentally catch a piece of confetti, like, in his mouth at one point, like, really early <laughs> in this that program. Right? He's like, pfft, pfft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Jerry. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Um, but, yeah, Steve also starts this town hall by saying that Vince has left the WWF to go have some babies. Oh, boy. Yeah, you know. And the 10 months since Stone Cold Steve Austin's been gone, a lot of things have changed. First off, he got Vince McMahon leaving the company so he could go make babies. Well, due to the fact that Shane and Stephanie both turned out to be complete jackasses. <laughs> gotcha. I hope for the sake of the human race that some bitch is shooting blanks. <laughs> If I got here a little sooner, I would have clubbed that some bitch over the head and taken him to get a visectomy clinic myself. <laughs> visectomy. <laughs> Another major development. You got Triple H and Stephanie marriage. They're on and off again. They're on again. They're off again. They're in power. They're out of power. To me, long story short, it's the worst marriage in the history of the business. <laughs> and that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> this marriage is the worst. And fuck you, man. For real. Fuck you. Well, another thing that struck me as being weird. You got a guy named Midian running around this place buck naked. <laughs> Midian catching strays is crazy. Yeah, why, why is Midian even brought up here? He's, he's catching, on the show. He's, yeah, he's over here. here. Yeah. yeah, he's over here catching fucking strays. Yeah, well, you expect the some bitch to have the decency, decency to get six tubes of clear seal and get those pimples off his ass. <laughs> Dude, crazy yeah. strays, man. Leave him alone. <laughs> And then obviously he talks about uh, coming back at uh, Unforgiven and he wants to drink beer, raise up both middle fingers and do what he wants. And I, if I don't find the yellow bastard that ran me down at Survivor Series, I'm directing this comment to all the WWF superstars. <laughs> I'm going to weed my way through every last one of you because getting back in the ring ain't good enough. What I'm saying is I'm not doing a damn thing until I get my payback. So he's just flipping out because this is he got hit by a car. He's back from being hit by a car. He got, like, a legit car hit him in the back. If you don't know that, I don't know where you were, but he got ran over by a car. <laughs> yeah, somebody at Survivor Series uh, hit him with a car, and we don't know still at this point. I think it was, a like, his shoot reason was a neck thing, right? He had to get neck surgery or something. It's always it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was like a, yeah, it was that. Big Foley actually talks about neck. it. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, but yeah, so Steve Austin uh, goes to celebrate after he runs down everything. Pretty <laughs> much buries everyone. Yeah, just pretty much lets everybody on TNN know what the fuck's going on in this show. I was hit by a car. Triple H just definitely run the place. Uh, Midian's, Vince isn't Midian's here. Naked. There's a guy named Midian. He is butt ass <laughs> naked all the time, and he's got pimples on his ass. Crazy. What? And uh, that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Yeah. No, that's all I got it. to say about that. That's what he says. I was happy with that. I was happy to end it there. And uh, he goes to celebrate. Hits the corner, and Mick Foley's here. Commissioner Mick Foley as well. He's uh, he's the commish. I don't remember how he became commissioner. Did Linda? That's probably a Linda fucking call. Linda, when they were going to make babies, I think that's what the story. Uh, uh, appointed him because Vince is busy making babies. This was after Mania 2000 retirement? Yes. yes yeah, so yes, he's yes, already yes. back from that. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mania Mick Foley was April, yeah. Mick Foley says that 10 months ago when he got his neck injury and uh, Foley retired, so it's been a while. Steve Austin's been kind of out and Foley, you know, yeah. retired after WrestleMania 2000 and then he got brought back. He's like, I didn't think I'd see both of us in the ring together again. Uh, Mick Foley is very nice he doesn't even feel like a character here he's just a very nice guy <laughs> yeah he's uh, yeah he's like uh he's a pushover yes okay pushover is a really good fucking way to put it he's not cactus jack he's not mankind this is mick foley he's just trying to do his job well pretty much yeah he's got some books to write too yeah a hell of fucking lot of books <laughs> <laughs> you actually he's never some... stop hearing about the books ever yeah they won't he, fucking go away he's got some books and he's got some stand-up to try out too also oh, oh yes, yes of course, lots of course. comedy stand-up sure. funny bits with this commissioner foley mick foley gets the penn state university cheap pop which uh 
you know, fantastic. Not, I always like that. I, the cheap pop, I always, and that's the one thing I will never not like, or not not like, excuse me. The cheap pop always makes me laugh. Dude, he didn't do the Penn State, you are an asshole, or whatever they did in Penn <laughs> Was it Penn State, State, State before that did that? <laughs> he was Penn State, yeah. Oh, that's funny. You you are, that's the an Rock's thing. He knew the Rock, rock would have yeah, kicked yeah. his ass. <laughs> has anyone tried to do that since? Well, you are an asshole. Asshole. No, no, like in wrestling, yeah, yeah, like that kind of like back and forth thing in a crowd. I feel like I've only the rock. Oh did it and no, I don't it. think I don't think that people are allowed to talk to the crowd like that. Oh, I guess you're. Yeah, you think that's you're like right. a we know thing. where they can at DPW. Yeah, yeah. I see it. <laughs> come on, yeah, that's right. Um, Foley says that he will find the man that Austin's looking for. Austin doesn't have to go around kicking his ass. All right, you're, you're good. <laughs> yeah, Foley let the commissioner do it. Yeah, um, and Steve Austin fucking fires back crazy at him. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I'm not fucking, you fucking, you let me this. First of all, I think you know as well as anybody, I don't give a damn about authority figures. He pretty, like, he, this is where is this true? doesn't feel, I, I guess so. <laughs> Steve Austin doesn't time care. Ever hearing this. Oh, all right. Research shows. Have you Sorry, seen I'm a new viewer on TNN. <laughs> uh, uh, Who is this bald ass <laughs> man? <a> <laughs> <laughs> Why does he have a goatee? Because <laughs> I don't think your little investigation is making very much progress, and I think you know what I mean. And Foley says, no, I. I don't, I don't know what you mean, actually. And Austin says, yeah, I'll explain it a little clearer to you. <laughs> How I, I don't know. That, I, I I'll explain. Explain, explain it. <laughs> yeah. How I don't know that it was you driving that rental car. I mean, I know you're one of the worst drivers in this business. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is, he thinks Mick Foley could have did it because he's a shitty driver. Is this true? <laughs> Sorry, new viewer. <laughs> TNN says yes. Uh, and then they start arguing off mic, so it's just them like kind of talking shit back to each other. And then all of a sudden... Wait a minute! <laughs> no. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, my! <laughs> there he is! <laughs> Chris Benoit comes down to the ring. And I was like, what is fucking... Something's wrong here. He doesn't have... Wrist tape on, so he looked no insane. wrist tape. Benoit is oh, no, nuts. Yeah, it did look weird. Yeah, it looks very strange here. You know what's funny is back in the day on like uh, the WWE games, they used to struggle all the time with like not giving guys the right wrist tape or not giving a wrist tape at all brutal. or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I remember people used to say that to me all the time. It's like, oh, that guy doesn't have fucking wrist tape, and be like. What are you fucking talking about? Who cares if he doesn't have wrist tape? And now I like, look at people with no wrist tape, and I go, you need to put some wrist tape on. Please put some fucking now. wrist tape on. Yeah, same, same with like an elbow pad or a knee pad missing. Like, yeah, it, it completely throws it off. I don't it know does, yeah. why that. I, I didn't notice it as a kid either, though, as like you said. But yeah, I completely notice it now. So Benoit is here to address an even bigger injustice than oh the drive-by. Oh, no. Yeah. Benoit says, last night. Oh, he was the two-time WWF champion. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, back yeah, to that's back. all good. Yeah, <laughs> back to back. Yeah, two times. <laughs> 1999 and 2000. 2000. <laughs> he was a two-time WWF champion last night, but it was taken from him. Oh. And then Mick Foley just fucking agrees. He says, "Yeah, you're right." Yeah, you're right, and you should get a rematch because of this. I agree. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Against right, the Rock. Shit, the Rock right. is the champ, by the way. Yeah, of course he is. He's the fucking man. For you man. TNN viewers. Steve, Steve Austin left for a little bit, and The Rock just grabbed the ball and said, it's mine now. I'm taking dude, it. Dude, that is it. Yeah. Really, and I don't know if Austin ever gets it back. I don't think so, dude. It, yeah. And, and The Rock only drops it when he leaves. Like he right. was, like he wouldn't have given it up like if he wasn't just leaving. Did you, I didn't. I thought, for some reason, I thought Kurt was in that match, but Kurt wasn't in that match. He Kurt faced Triple H at the pay per view, right? Because they yeah. had the, the stuff angle. Yeah, the the four way was Rock, Benoit, Undertaker, and Kane for the WWF title. Went sixteen. You got to respect okay. that uh, Kane was still in that. I was. That's the part I was surprised by. Yeah, I mean he must have. I mean he was still fucking super over, and uh, you know I guess they hadn't yeah. completely killed him yet. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, Foley says Benoit was screwed. He said, you were so screwed. Fuck it, man. We're going to do Benoit versus Rock for the title here tonight at Penn State University. Yeah. yeah Wait a minute. Right. What is that song? <laughs> it's Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle, long red track pants. He just looks like The Rock. <laughs> yeah, I love these looks, man. I, I think these are all iconic looks for these guys. This feels like like this was setting up for a, like, I feel like a lot of these are in video games, these looks. Like the Kurt was, was Mick pants. Foley with Commissioner shirt in a video game? Just bring it. Ah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Does Foley have a shaved head here or no, though? No, no, okay. he doesn't. I think he has a shaved head and just bring it. 
He does shave it at some point, I guess. Soon. He does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. By the way, there's definitely uh Foley. By the way, he why Foley also agreed to give Benoit a title shot is because he he points to a fan. He says, "There's a young man holding a sign out there that says Benoit was screwed." <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy <laughs> sign. Yeah, <it's> unbelievable. <laughs> So that's why he gave him because that one fan was on okay. Benoit's side. Yes. Well, it's but all about the fans here on TNN and Raw. That's true. Of course. Uh, and Kurt Angle is here because he was screwed against Triple H because Stephanie kicked him in the nuts big style. <laughs> he kicked me in the genitals and cost me my match. And I, I say I almost <laughs> lost because a big part of friendship is learning to forgive. And Steph, I saw the tape last night and I saw how terrified you were of Triple H and I saw how he forced himself on you after the match. I said, what Dude, I love this. Here? I love this gaslighting angle. It, this, Kurt's this is, nuts. Kurt and Triple H, and they're all three gaslighting each other. <laughs> it's it's insane. Yeah, um, yeah I, I can't angle, believe this didn't go longer. Well, uh, yes, I can. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> so, somebody had to go to a title, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, sure. Something's had to change. Um, but Angle, yeah, Angle basically saying, Stephanie, you know, what, one of my favorite quotes ever is, you, you always say you love Thunderstorm, so it was a few raindrops between friends. <laughs> basically, <laughs> is the whole Angle here uh, that they do with Triple H, and, uh, you know, he knows that she is scared of Triple H, but yes. he can be her shining knight. Of he course. can be the savior. Save you. I know you love me, baby. <laughs> I know you love me. It's so funny because like, it's not even like Triple H is doing anything. Like Triple H isn't doing anything. He just exists. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't done anything. And just Steph trying to like, win the belt. You can, like, he's like, I can save you, Steph. From what, like, you know, there's nothing to be saved from. You're not doing anything. Well, Triple H, you know, that he's the crazy eyed abusive husband and then he beat me at the pay-per-view. And if anyone deserves some justice, it's me, McFoley, and that is true. Yeah, so Foley then says, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's, he's, he's denied. No rematch for you, Kurt. I thought about it for seven or eight seconds, and no. And no, Kurt says, uh, well, I'll accept that for now. <laughs> hey, Kurt does. But I want to I talk about one incident from last night with you, Austin. How dare you look at me like that, Austin? And Austin gets in Kurt's face, and he says, what do you think? How, how dare you think that me or Benoit hit you with a car? I mean, first of all, Benoit wasn't even here, and I couldn't commit such an act. And last night, I offered you something very valuable. My friendship. And a special replica of an Olympic gold medal. <laughs> you can see the medal later, and it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it is crazy. Yeah, it is nuts. <laughs> he said, I consider that to be very nice since you're not really a winner. Uh, and what do you do? How do you respond? You attack me. So I demand an apology here. And I speak with Chris Benoit here because I don't want my career to go down the drain because you were too slow to jump out of the way of a car last November. <laughs> so <laughs> you owe me and the rest of America an apology. Dude, this was so crazy. He was mouthing off crazy at Austin. Like, I always love seeing guys mouth off at Austin because you knew like it was like tension building. You knew you, they were going to get their ass shit. kicked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, he looked at Austin and he's like, you know, I offered you this medal and that was nice because like you're not even really a winner like you're that. You're a loser. I I was like, oh, <laughs> <my>. <laughs> yeah. you're gonna die. Yeah. Oh, man. And Austin, yeah. Austin the whole time has that Austin look. <laughs> like, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's building up excitement inside. That rattlesnake. He's that rattlesnake yeah. ready to strike. Beady little eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Austin said, Well, I appreciate the fact you offered me your friendship and gave me that gold medal. And I do kind of owe you an apology, but, uh, that's probably not gonna happen tonight. <laughs> and then he just stunners him. It's not like an Lamb intense stunner. thing. Just stunners him. Then he stunners Benoit. And then uh, the Disturbed song plays and JR says, and listen to that music, that's Disturbed. And they're gonna be on Heat this Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, I love the way his delivery was here. Because he kind of played it off. He was like, you know, I was like, oh shit, eh, for a second. Yeah, he was I'll like, apologize. you know, I do kind of sort of owe you an apology. That's probably not going to happen here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I mean, he Wham. doesn't even hesitate. It's just like, no, bam, right gut yeah. kick, fucking stunner. Yeah, super well done uh, stuff here at the end. And, uh, I mean, easy to say that you're looking at, like, four of the best ever in the ring right now. So. 100%. Yeah. But this did go 20 minutes. Yeah, well, they had to get to. all the storylines in. They needed all the storylines. No, know they kind of did on. a video. <laughs> no, you needed the casual stone cold. You know, you need everybody. The in casual life, fan needed to fucking. But sit also, this. the best line ever came out was, "You were too slow to move out of the way of the car." <laughs> yeah, I guess at the end of the day, having Austin stun them was was awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty neat. So. There's all. Uh, this is also an episode. Well, I don't want to spoil it, but this has one of my favorite stunners of all time, and I didn't even know it was this show. Oh, I'm excited to hear which one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we start off here with Kane versus Rikishi. 
<laughs> That's the this first match. This is a James match. I, I saw this. I was like, James going to love this fucking match. <laughs> first match on TNN. Hey, man, they were swinging for the fences for a minute. I was like, oh, shit. All right. Uh, before the match started, by the way, they, uh, Lawler and JR on commentary say they're going to open up the brand new Playboy magazine tonight, and it's going to have exclusive pictures of Mamacita. And then they recap the <laughs> ending of the 18-minute segment. That was too and- good. Oh, they re- oh, also, they, they replay the stunner two more times. A in million, form. every angle possible, Tony. They yeah, show yeah, these yeah, fucking stunners. Showed, again, I forgot about that. Yeah, you know what? Crazy. That's his move. Uh, fucking Stone Cold Stunner. Lawler, uh, so Kane and Rikishi, as James said. Lawler says, is Amir, is Kane getting bigger? He is fucking gigantic, so yeah, I fucking You haven't he even gets, seen half of yeah, Kane's he's, dick. He gets like, <laughs> he probably gains 50 more pounds he of is pure so, muscle. Dude, by 2001, he is a fucking... He's bursting at his skin, is how fucking big he is. Uh, JR says, uh, 750 combined pounds between these two, which I was like, holy fucking shit, is that right? 750 combined? That is pretty nuts. Guess wow. So. Kane was 300 here, wasn't he? Yeah, I guess so. Which would make Rikishi 450 pounds? Is that right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> his ass was 450 pounds. Dude, his ass was ass in here, too. We didn't get to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I though. guess I, I just have to Rikishi weight 425 pounds. Oh, shit. All right. Well, he's a little bigger today, Tony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm just 25 today, you fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> fucking bitch. Trying to fucking Why are you yelling at me, JR? What trying to I fucking do? call me out, you fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Kane versus Rikishi here. Rikishi no sunglasses or diaper, which is weird that this guy doesn't have that on. Because James, something tells me this is a bad man right here. Well, something maybe. Tells me. Well, not yet. We got a little bit of time. Uh, <laughs> Rikishi <laughs> doesn't even make it to the ring before Kane and Rikishi start brawling on the ramp here. Yeah. Okay. I was. It, was that just they like? Does Kane and Rikishi have a backstory here that would call for Kane to attack him on the ramp? <laughs> they got heat, brother. Yeah, crazy so. heat right now. Yeah, yeah. they've been and like they got for real. Weight heat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Kane hits Rikishi with the ring bell on the outside. Uh, match still has not started yet. Um, Rikishi tries to make Kane drop into the corner seated position two times in a row. Kane fucking refuses. Dude, I was and then, so bad. Rolls out of the ring like an asshole piece of Dude, shit. You Idiot. Would, would fucking absolutely refused to do the drop down. Like, you even see Rikishi, like, wants to do the turn back for it, and he fucking won't the sit people down. People want a stink face, you big red idiot. They want Rikishi's ass in your mouth now. <laughs> Rikishi was hitting the wrong buttons to do the sit down thing, James. Sit down. Like, he, he yeah, you're wrong. right. No diaper, no sunglasses. <laughs> fucking just fucked up, man. So, Kane <laughs> faces the ref. Ref is Teddy Law, by the way. Yes. Ref calls for the bell. Rikishi then hits Kane with the chair, and then they ring the bell. And the, then oh, they, Kane Well, they struggled to get the, the bell because they fucking used it, so it was, like, lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Rikishi rolls in, and he tells Kane to bring his big red ass in here and fucking go to corner seat position and let me do my signature you piece of shit Kane Dude. and Rikishi get in they start swinging on each fuck each other the refs yeah, all run throwing. down they're throwing bombs yeah, here everything is what? super heated on this show like everything is super heated when uh when Rikishi was trying to bump him in the corner earlier by the way JR on commentary said Rikishi uh, buried those cheeks deep into the abdomen of the big room and she he calls him sweet cheeks, cheeks or something at some point he does crazy. yeah yeah, I forget where it was. He does say that, though. Um, Rikishi then knocks Kane to the outside, and that ends the segment. So I was a little surprised at how that ended, because Rikishi bumps Kane over the top, and Kane's just like, ah, all right, and leaves. He doesn't like try to get back in. Nobody stops him. He just People actually have to hold back Rikishi and not Kane. Yeah, that's how it goes at the end of uh, <laughs> video games, when you break out and you finish them up, and they leave, yeah. and it's done. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, so Rikishi, I wonder... Uh, you know, I wonder I wonder how that went. Like, Rikishi, hey, man, you're going to hit Stone Cold with the car. We're just going to say it was you. Oh, he did it? He did it for The Rock. Damn it. You're he right. He did it for the people. He did. How crazy is that? Like, just looking back on it, like... Like, you're going to be the guy to take I out Stone I can't Cold, even remember. Austin. Yeah, I can't even remember my reaction as a kid to this. Like, I can't even remember what I thought about this. But, like, I definitely probably didn't think Rikishi was the one that hit Steve Austin with the car. I definitely didn't think it was Rikishi. And I, I feel like when it was revealed, I was confused more than intrigued. Yeah, I, I feel like it was so, like, obviously they went for something that was like, let's try to make somebody and, like, take somebody, right. like, from left field. Because I'm sure at that point, like, a lot of people were like, ah, it's got to be, like, Triple H or Chris Jericho or, you know, or just something, yeah, you know, right. just somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of getting up in the card there. Right. Um, but, you know, being Rikishi. 
Was there anyone else that it was going to be? I feel like I don't really remember ever hearing anybody else. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know the names, I, but I, I assume the people that they slotted were Undertaker, Triple H, whoever is in the main event. Sure, Rock, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Anybody that was in that main event, fucking five or six guys was I, definitely on the list, I'm sure. Dude, I actually just found one here. Brian Gewirtz said... Uh, that at one point, it was a lot of people and it kept switching. It was kind of hot potato. I remember at one point, Vince McMahon looked at me and was just like, Taz. <laughs> so it was oh, at wow. one point, Taz was going to be the one that hit Stone Cold with the car. And then the next week, for whatever reason, it was someone different. Uh, he wouldn't call it, he says, I wouldn't necessarily call it a success. Rikishi's a Hall of Fame performer, but he's just likable and a natural baby face. People want to like him. Sometimes you just uh, don't know until you try. Yeah, sure. He started wearing that little little leather jacket joint. <laughs> yeah, was it? It was a f- fat wear, right? Fat wear. Fat, yeah. <laughs> fat wear. Fat two wear. PH yeah. fat. Yeah, how yeah. It was th- fat wear. How do you think? I can't even imagine in my brain it being Taz. Like, I mean, either he'd be because he, he's already in the the jumpsuit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Been he was already prepared. Can you imagine seeing Taz fighting fucking like? The Rock and you know what I mean, like in the ring, like crazy style, like yeah. that, like regularly. I would like to, like Steve Austin and Taz, like <laughs> yeah, they would, yeah. dude. Jr. would have been commentary the whole time. Like, look at this small little bastard. He's dude, gonna beat Undertaker would have gave him nothing. Yeah, they would have beat the shit out of him. Taz would have fell off the Hell in a Cell too. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. <into> the- <laughs> he would have taken a crazy bump though. Yeah, he would have taken a crazy <laughs> bump. I don't know. His, his neck was already fucked at that time. He yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, he was ready for commentary already. <laughs> he just got here. <laughs> I, got, I got some big plans for you to talk here, brother. So we go to uh, Edge and Christian, uh, and the Hardy Boys are in a ladder match. A little graphic tonight. Yes. Um, we get an X-Pac and Chris Jericho first blood match graphic tonight. <laughs> Strange match, but yeah, yes. Yeah, for sure. Well, you got to blow that one off, sucker. <laughs> we go backstage. Steve Austin is walking. He goes straight into a locker room. And would you look at that? Undertaker's there putting on his boots. Yeah, he's, uh, he's sitting there, and Taker says, Man, don't even, don't even come in here. And give me that look. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> you know I wasn't there. You know I was taking some time off. But I'll tell you something. If I had some information, I'd give it to you. Because if they run you over, the sob, he's still out there. He'd run me over. You know, Austin, it's kind of a shame, is it? Austin, says, shame about what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Someday, me and you, we're gonna have to go. I said, what? I said, what? Go where? That's what Austin says. Well, I don't know. Is that a damn shame? Now I think about it. Maybe it's not. This he just was spits right on the fucking floor. Guy like me loved this segment. I thought this was so lit. I loved it. Like Taker, like they kind of planned the seeds here, and it was like it was super setting up for a next match. Yeah, and it was yeah. super like. Taker, like it felt like a like a Taker moment for for yeah. some reason to me. Yeah, like this, yeah. this is like the most Taker moment ever. It's a damn shame, Austin. <laughs> damn shame. <laughs> damn shame. Me and you gonna have to kick each other's ass. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get that match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two thousand. I was like, yeah, let me get that. Hey, let me get, get that. This, hey, don't get this twisted though. This does not mean Taker loses any strikes. That's not how this works. Yeah, no strikes to take it away. Just, <laughs> no, the match <laughs> probably sucked too. Anyway, yeah, it would have <laughs> been, yeah, been trash. Yeah, hundred percent sucked ass. Yeah, been <laughs> so we go backstage. Mick Foley is in his office, commissioner office, which is in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> is what is he sitting on? Because he's not sitting on a toilet. Sitting Probably on a sitting toilet. on a little, uh, little bucket crate? or something. Oh, yeah. a milk. Yeah, I'm thinking a bucket. Crate? Yeah, bucket, oh, okay, bucket yeah. thing. Uh, so he's sitting there. He's got a bunch of shit set up there. There's a dog toy sitting on the toilet reading a newspaper. And Edge and Christian come in, and Edge says, "Hey, man, no, we we were in a grueling cage match last night. A reward is a is a ladder match." And Chris says, "Yeah, thanks, thanks to the Max." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mick says, "You're welcome." Chris says, "Mick, I was being sarcastic." And Mick says, listen, our first night on TNN, I need a historic match. What better match to have my two top stars, Edge and Christian, against the rivals, the Hardys? Mick says, oh, by the way, this is your last title shot against the Hardys. And Christian says, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah, by the <laughs> way, fuck you, man. <laughs> this is going to be the, sh- Christian says, it's going to be the shortest reign for the Hardys. And Mick says, uh, you know, I guess you'll need this then. And he picked up a little umbrella and he said, get it? Shortest, you know, because shortest reign, little umbrella. Get it? I would have attacked him. I would have jumped him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> game of swirly. Swirly. <laughs> yeah, right in the bathroom his head's getting in the toilet real quick <laughs> and it says that's not funny you you're a <laughs> <laughs> uh 
And then some lady comes out of the stall and says, I thought it was funny, Mr. Foley. Ooh, she's taking a big ass shit in there. Yeah, she paid him too. In the she didn't pay him bathroom. for the shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, That's the commissioner's good. office. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem. She took, it's even crazier that she took his shit in the commissioner's office. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, just do it. Matt Foley asked you to do that. What's going on here? So now we have Bubba Ray Dudley versus Taz. <laughs> Holy shit, Taz! That looks like a bad man. Right there. <laughs> bad man. <laughs> I'm a bad man. Hell yeah! So last night on Heat, the Dudleys and the Acolytes were hanging out, and uh, they did a parody. I don't even know if you want to call it a parody. They just did the Budweiser <laughs> was up commercial. <laughs> Yeah, it's straight up, and the Budweiser was up guy was delivering Budweiser. To Duke! Him. Yeah, yeah. Man, Duke! That's crazy. I can't believe it. This was so lit. Yeah, everyone in the room, uh, they do a real close up on everybody they as, the, as everybody, the guy brings yeah. in the Budweisers, and fucking they fucking get right up on him. What's up? What's up? <laughs> they do Bradshaw. Bradshaw says, What's up? Farouk says it too. What's up? Bradshaw put his whole ass into it. Farouk was just like kind of committing to it because he had to. Bradshaw was down <laughs> to do the What's up? Yeah, that is so fucking awesome. Yeah, that's so cool, man. Yo, Duke, we got a phone. <laughs> Dude, they, you probably have to explain that. There's probably nobody. Oh, yeah. Nobody oh really wow. Talking there about. might be people who don't know that. I'm just thinking about, this. like, you're like, the guy's there, and they're like, what guy? What okay, who the all fuck right, is all this right, guy? All right, all right, all right. So, people have no um, idea what you're talking about. Yeah, so there was a, there was a Budweiser commercial that was super popular so popular in fact that it still somehow exists in today's zeitgeist so, it was a yeah. scary movie was it? Um, yeah scary movie parody if you guys have ever seen that where uh they they have Ghostface Killer calling him and they say what's up <laughs> he does the mask thing that yeah. was a parody of this I don't even know if people that saw that movie knew that it was a parody of the Budweiser commercial they just you're, probably like think it's now, from there yeah you're right yeah anybody that knows what's up knows it from scary movie probably yeah yeah, so Budweiser had a commercial back then where it was a guy calling. It was basically just boys' night out. So yeah. it was. Uh, this was way back, like they had landline phones and everything. And he called up his buddy and he was like, "What are you? Hey, what are you up to?" He said, "Watching the game, drinking a Bud." And he says, "Oh shit!" He says his roommate walks in and he says, "Yo, pick up the phone." And he picks up the phone. And he says, "What's up?" <laughs> <laughs> and he That's says, so "You know, watching the game, drinking a Bud." He goes, "Yo, Duke, pick up the phone." <laughs> He's on the stairs. He picks up the phone. Hello? What's up? What's up? <laughs> and so that's like, he's living with roommates and everyone picks up the phone and says, what's up? And he says he's uh, watching the game, drinking a butt at the end of the commercial. Dude, everybody, everybody was hangs calling up. their friends doing that shit too. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's funny as fuck. Dude, the what's up thing took over the world for a minute. Like it was genuinely 100%. Yeah, it was good marketing. Um, Man, damn. It was probably one of the better marketing things I've ever seen, period. That shit was so good. And yeah, he says, "What? Is, yeah, so what are you going to do? He said, I'm watching a game, drinking a bud. True, true. <laughs> true, true is my favorite thing. What are you, what are you up to? True, true. Yeah, in the scary movie one, one of my favorite things they ever do. I still say it to this day. Literally, I still say it all the time is uh, chilling, killing. Yeah, true, 100%. True, yeah. Killing. chilling, killing. <laughs> Ayo, Duque. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just so funny. So they parodied awesome. this. And if people didn't know, that's where the Dudley Boys there got go. the what's up thing from in general, that they keep, they end up keeping this Forever. for the rest of their career. Legit. Yeah. Um, which is pretty crazy to see. So like seeing them do this on heat and then also seeing the acolytes also do also the it, was yeah. up thing on heat. If you guys haven't seen the commercial, you got to check it out. It's fucking awesome. And you got to check it's out the scary movie crazy. parody, which how, is also awesome. I wonder how soon the scary movie ones. Unbelievable. Uh, I wonder how soon after this, they start doing it as the move. It has to be probably pretty soon. It's right? got to be pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah probably. That's awesome. I, I yeah. want to know someone to find that if uh, when the first time the they debut did the was up, uh, yeah. I think they were already doing the move, but I don't think they were doing was up. They weren't when they first right. I think so it. too. Yeah, I think so oh, too. Okay. Was up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just awesome, man. Chilling, killing, true. So Taz comes out in the boiler room jumpsuit, and I say, God fucking damn it. <laughs> I said, it's already, it is, it's it already is fucked. It's already September done. of two thousand, and he's already in the suit. You know he debuted in January of the same year, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, that is unbelievable, man. He they've already he did that because I think Vince said, "Well, you you look like a freak." Yeah, your legs are too big or yeah, something, right? Yeah, like something, he was. No, yeah, really? Which yeah, I thought his legs said? were crazy. Okay. I thought, you know, why would you cover that shit? A different beauty standards back in the day. Yeah, I guess Quads so. are super in now. Hell yeah. Um, but Taz comes out in the boiler room jumpsuit, and I was fucking. I didn't even care at this point, but. This was this was supposed to be a tag team match, by the way. But oh, is that, Taz, oh, is that right? Because the Dudley Boys come out and they come out as a tag team, so they were like preparing for a tag team match. 
Okay. Um, but Taz calls out Bubba and says that he's scared to fight him alone. I th- okay, I thought it was a singles that Taz just said, hey, get your boy out of here. You can't fight on your own. Okay, well, I mean, they came out, like, usually if yeah, it's a Yeah, they did come singles, out like a tag team. Right, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. The, so, because uh, even if it's a singles, they usually, they'll come out and they'll, they'll say, like, Bubba Ray with Devon or something. Oh, did it say Dudley's on the It said Dudley Boys. Yeah. Oh, okay, well then, absolutely. Um, but um, Devon uh, leaves, he just fucking leaves. He said, okay. Okay, this is even sillier. Okay, so Taz is feuding with Lawler here, right? Because uh, he's cause... getting ready to get on commentary. Because this shit, <laughs> he's gonna take his yeah. spot. <laughs> this yeah. shit is cooked. Yeah, this point. <laughs> Lawler, as Taz is coming out, says our inaugural show on TNN, and we have to include this low life jerk. <laughs> I think at Unforgiven, Taz beats Lawler uh, by Raven interference. I think Raven debuted at Unforgiven by helping. Yeah, I was about to Taz say we're we're, we're just getting Raven into the WWF at this point. Yes. So. The Dudleys surely know this, that Taz has help to help him win just at this pay-per-view. And yeah, they still say, yeah, bo- no, what fuck you, we're leaving. They're boys, you know what I mean? That's I, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, why the fuck would he, you, you know, dub? why the fuck would yeah, Raven interfere? We're, yeah, we're boys, so the fuck? Can't trust Taz. Look at this jumpsuit, man. Look at this guy. He's you not the same guy. Can't fucking trust Raven. That's a good fucking guy. Look at that guy, for sure. Yeah, Look at that man, guy. 100%. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we'll get into this matchup here. Super quick match. Nothing to it, really. No, they just do their usual Shit. Yeah, okay. ref bump, exploder, Taz plex. Taz goes ringside, throws water in Jerry Lawler's face. You stupid <laughs> bastard! Uh, Lawler then gets up to approach Taz, but I'll be a son of a bitch. Raven's here. No, that's Johnny oh, no. Polo. <laughs> Scotty the body is here. <laughs> you remember this guy? <laughs> Raven DDT's Lawler right on the floor. Bubba hits the Bubba Bomb on Taz. Then Raven gets in, hits Bubba with the DDT, then points at Taz, and Taz covers Bubba. The ref is bumped, by the way. The ref got bumped off an Irish whip. Like, I think Taz whipped Bubba into the corner, and the ref was in the way. He bumped him. Ref gets up, uh, and Taz gets the win because he needs help because he's a little baby man and can't win on his he's own. A bitch since day one <laughs> game in the He's UF. a fucking bitch, and he can't fucking win. At one point during this match, by the way, Bubba sets up Taz and just stands there and looks out of the crowd and yells, Power bomb! Yeah, and then he, and then he, he does it. it. I yeah, he does it. it. And the yeah. crowd pops for it. Yeah, the oh yeah. shit! Yeah. He did what he said he's gonna do. I feel like that so rarely happens where somebody yells a move and they actually hit it. Yeah, uh, you're right. That is a anomaly. <laughs> well, Devon comes out and Taz and Raven powder. By the way, Devon a little too late though. A little, yeah. You saw Raven, right? Like, you saw Jerry Lawler get fucked up? <laughs> well, he's back there with the bud guy. Why not? Yes, uh... <laughs> Yo, Devon! Pick up the phone! Pick up the table! <laughs> That's, I'm surprised they didn't Why change did they do that? that. Yeah, yeah Devon, wow. pick up the table. Oh, my God. That should have been a shirt, at least. So, backstage, Triple H is with Stephanie, uh, and Triple H is asking her what's wrong. She's got a little pouty face on, and, well, Steph says that, you know, Kurt saying happy birthday to her in Triple H, but you didn't even <laughs> give me a present. Yeah, you didn't give me a fucking present. And uh, Triple H says, listen, I've gone over this a million times. Uh, I didn't forget. Your present sitting at home. Gift wrapped. It's waiting for you. I didn't forget. What, you know, I was really hoping that he would have done. This is one of like my favorite like gaslighting men things to respond to, and it would have been for a very funny moment. If she said, you didn't even give me a present, and I was really hoping he would say, well, your present's right here. I'm going to give you the best <laughs> sex of your life and then the girl goes god you just don't get it walks out of the room like and the dude's like whoa why, why were you so angry good enough? Thought, like, yeah my yeah. cock isn't like good enough for this and then i want to play like the seinfeld music and then cut to the outside of the arena and then to well, the next seinfeld so yeah well that fucking shit sucks <laughs> dude raven and taz and the dudleys were just here man come on oh uh, yeah you're right you're right well Please. stephanie was she was pissed that triple h gave her a rough kiss after yeah. his match with kurt angle instead of uh what you would say a romantic kiss it wasn't very romantic at all and triple h says well that kiss was for <laughs> kurt <laughs> not for you well, the kiss was meant for kurt angle i wanted to it kiss was, kurt it wasn't aimed at you there's a proof of point to kurt that you're mine and it was an exclamation point on the end of an ass kicking that i gave kurt angle last night and why did i kick his ass i did that for you and my pre- I, my present is my cock. Your, like, yeah, your present is the cock. <laughs> <laughs> what? I thought you would. What? I oh. oh, here it goes. <laughs> it's 
So Jerry Lawler is at commentary. He's complaining about getting his ass kicked by Raven. He's wiping water off of himself. <laughs> uh, and now it's time for Edge and Christian versus the Hardy Boys. Ladder match for the tag titles, by the way. These dudes so, just did a cage match, by the way. Just did a cage Literally match. Literally just did one. This one's sweet. This is a fun fucking match. Oh, I was going to say, I feel like this one's forgotten. I don't remember it, this one. I think I so, think too, Tony, because there's some shit here that happens that they do that gets praised way crazier <laughs> than it does here. Yeah, well, more people watching WrestleMania. Nobody knew what TNN was. Come they on, bro. TNN's anymore. ratings weren't popping. I don't know. Not no. Yet. They were not. <laughs> Tony, they were not. Yeah, historically, they, they were Nashville, not. They were, they were popping crazy in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, my world. So these four guys had a cage match on pay-per-view. Yes. Travel. Promos. Ladder match. Travel. Right. And they beat the shit out of each other in both of these matches. Like, there was no, like, dialing it in in these matches. No way. They might have went even harder here than they did in the cage match. Yeah, I definitely feel like... My favorite shit is watching these guys early on, like through these TLC matches and, and through these ladder matches. And you can definitely see them with a chip on their shoulder. Like you can see that they're trying they to make a name for proof. themselves. Yeah. yeah constantly. If you're like, yeah. there's no way, like they're like, we're going to have you guys do a fucking cage match and then a ladder match the next night. And then like, they both have to be like pretty, they have to be awesome. And they go, all right, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. We're going to have you do a ladder match middle of the show. All right. All yeah, right. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We will, and it'll be sweet, and it'll be the thing uh, that everyone comes out of the show liking. So Edge and Christian uh, make their entrance first. They get in the ring, and they set up the ladder and try to win Abyss-style. We just talked about, about to say, doing this. I was about to say, <laughs> what did we just watch where someone tried to do this? You're it's right. Like, uh, the whole effing show. <laughs> Abyss 2010 TNA. RVD. Yeah, man. And the Hardy's music hits. They run down. They don't even do their taunts. They run out to stop them from climbing. I was like, oh, my God, that is so sick. Um, yeah, and there's some really cool stuff in here. So, like, yeah. Edge and Christian literally put Jeff Hardy in a ladder, like, inside, like, an it's ice like cube a, sandwich. A like trap. A, yeah, like yeah. a sandwich, yeah, yeah. And then they put him vertically in the corner, <laughs> which is crazy, by the way, yes. that they were able to work this out. Yeah, the ladder's upside down, but Jeff is upright. Right, he's up. Yeah, this is crazy. And they hit poetry in motion on him. That is fucking awesome. The Hardy's also, uh, they, like, open the ladder... Like, they spread it apart on its side and slam it into Edge of Christian's balls. <laughs> and then drop kick. And I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. Jeff, at one point, climbed up the ladder. I think as Edge of Christian started to get offense on, like, Matt. They throw Matt into the ladder, and it falls. Jeff falls off, and then the ladder falls on top of Jeff. It was fucking brutal. Fuck. Yeah, they're all taped up from, from this match they're they had really last night. Up, yeah, yes. they're all crazy fucked up. Like, Edge and Christian were, like, limping to the ring. Like, like <laughs> legit limping. <laughs> Right, shoot, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, of course, get our Presto double features of the night, though. Come on, presto! guys. Get your Presto <laughs> double features of the night. Yeah, I was, that's pretty funny. That they, they, they had sponsors for the in-between show. That was funny. That's awesome. Uh, Matt Hardy has broken out the very large <laughs> ladder now. And you know it is large because commentary says, wow, look at that big <laughs> ladder. <laughs> <laughs> they, they throw it at Edge and Christian, who are on top of la a ladder already. <laughs> they just deck them with it. Um, very cool stuff here. Matt climbs, does his taunt. Edge knocks him off. Jeff has his hands on the belt here. And you might remember this from a certain other match that they have, but this is the precursor to that. Jeff has his hands on the belt. Christian moves the ladder. Jeff is now hanging from the two belts. Edge is on the other ladder. Spears Jeff Hardy in midair. Off, it's the same spot. It's the same spot. It's unbelievable. And I don't even know if this is the first time they do it. I think they might have done it in the No Mercy match. Oh really? Okay. So like, it, but it, it's so crazy how many like I, it, I they've definitely done it more than once already. So like they do it at least twice before Mania uh, seventeen, and the Mania seventeen one is just so crazy for some reason. I don't know if it was higher or what it was. It, it was the stakes, the moment, the yeah, crowd the, was the also flashing camera angles, lights, the camera yeah, angles, camera angles, angle. yeah, the flashing the lights arena, were fucking gnarly. Yeah, yeah, it's just it might have been higher. I feel like that belt was higher. The ladder he jumped off was higher too, I think, Tony. Edward, yeah. At Mania. Dude, the crowd goes uh, fucking nuts here, by the way. They're they shitting, do. holy they do. shit. It's awesome. It's fucking yeah, such this a crowd sick is, spot. This crowd is fucking dead all fucking night. <laughs> and this match is, they're lit. Like, they're ready for this type of shit, you know? Yeah, this is in awesome. 2000, too. Um, Lita comes in with a chair to help, but Christian hits the reverse DDT on her. <laughs> no fucking regard. He doesn't even think about it twice. He's like, wham. Yeah, she like she just gets fucking destroyed. Yeah, she's went um, in there with the boys. Matt Hardy then hits a belly to back suplex on Christian off the ladder. Dude. And I'll tell you, man, like that could have been like catastrophically wrong. It's insane. They are so 
close to the ropes. I legit had to watch it a few times. I swear Christian's head hit that bottom rope. But I, it, From I hard camera, it looked like it did. Yeah, like, it from, does. From the way they, they pointed it, it looked like it did. But he ends up missing the ropes. If these were like WCW steel cables and he, Christian's neck hit dead. that, he would have died. Oh, yeah, he legit would have just He'd died. He'd be fucking dead, yeah. I mean, even doing that spot on like that, like it's pretty much on the apron practically. That had to hurt like a fucking motherfucker, man. Yeah, absolutely. It would have been game over. Um, Edge then hits a cutter to Matt Hardy off the ladder. Diamond cutter. <laughs> yeah, like not straight, straight up. <laughs> straight up diamond cutter. I said, oh, shit, that's cool. Uh, Edge climbs and grabs the belts, but Matt Hardy then power bombs him off the ladder, just stuffs his ass. I mean, this is all in the same exact spot, by the way. So the back suplex, the diamond cutter, the power bomb are all in the same position on the ladder. They just keep rifling through these. Yeah, they just keep moving out of the way, and then <laughs> yeah. time for the next one right here. Yeah. They never thought like maybe we should push the ladder in a little bit more or anything. They're like, <laughs> no. we'll just take it as fucking hard as we can right on the apron there. That'd yeah, be okay. He could have killed Edge in the same fucking thing. His head could have hit the ropes and shit. And that's the kind of fucking heat that I like to see. <laughs> yeah. So Edge and Christian set up ladders beside Matt Hardy as he's climbing this middle ladder. Yes. And they have chairs in their hand, and they were going to concerto Matt Hardy in the middle of climbing the ladder. <laughs> they were all, so sick. Yeah, all three on a ladder they were going to concerto him is so fucking funny. I was very excited to see it. Yeah, me too. I need to see that shit. The concerto the ladder shit is fucking lit. It might have happened. It might have been a callback. No, I want I want someone to do it like fucking crazy Tippy style. Top? Yeah, like at the very top and then take a bump, <laughs> fucking <laughs> smack off the shit. Like you really want to make a wrestling moment? Like that's a moment to oh be my, made. So you know what, what all mean? three standing on the top? Yeah, like like yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like he gets to like to the point where he's like at the top rung of he's the ladder. Like, like if Jeff grabbing the fucking yeah, yeah and fucking just Oh, oh yeah. my god. <laughs> <laughs> What you, watch out, you, watch out, watch out! Where do you go? Where do you go? Well, that's for them to figure out. I'm not if the wrestler. If you go left or right, you're knocking these dudes over and dying. If you go backwards, you're There's dead. There's tables behind them or something. Yeah, oh, just, you know. Oh, tables. oh, the tables would be a good save. That would be save. good, yeah. Yeah, the tables would be That'd a good save. That would be crazy save. as fuck. Write that down. You should be able to do that in the video game. <laughs> okay. Uh, How can you not? Realistically, it's not fucking happening. <laughs> no. But, but in a video game... Being able to concerto somebody fucking beast style off the ladder should definitely be an option. Dude, video games haven't even figured out how to let you climb to the top rope with a weapon yet. Ladder matches suck in video games they, historically. They're, yeah, they're, uh, they're not good. They're not good. What about that one that you played? Which one? The Fight Forever one? No, the three hour one. Oh, oh, yeah, that was fucking horrible. It was fucking horrible. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Smackdown vs. Raw 2010? Yeah, I, that was miserable, man. That was, would have been um, way better if you could concerto somebody in that game <laughs> off the ladder. I just want to make well, sure everybody understands that. It would have been, James, but the the AI wouldn't have done it. So, oh, that's true, yeah. They would have just fucking kept knocking the ladder over and fucking <laughs> pissing me off for three fucking hours, man. <laughs> Superplex? No! <laughs> Dude, teleporting to the top of a ladder because you have finishers? That's so fucking fucked up, man. <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm just thinking about that. Like, yeah, at the top of the ladder concerto, you just That's a lot of balance, you free, too. You got free fall from 20 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, in the, uh, what game? I think it was the... The Day of Reckoning games, where if you get bumped off the ladder, you legit went head first down to the mat. <laughs> like that's how. Uh, that's what this would have been. That, yeah, it, like Jeff definitely would have done it. Like if they would have, if they would have called it, it, yeah, yeah if they so. would have called it, Jeff would have been like, yeah, all right, I'll take you it. Know, whatever, yeah, whatever, yeah, I'll be good. Like he, and he ended up, he probably wouldn't get hurt. He wouldn't have gotten hurt, and he would have been fine. Jeff has historically <laughs> always just been fine. I don't know how Somehow, he always. Yeah, <laughs> it's Somehow. just fine. <laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Time might tell you otherwise, but <laughs> <laughs> historically he's been all right from the bumps. You know, That's true. Yeah, well, yeah. In the ring. Um, so Lita and <laughs> pull him down. Matt Hardy grabs the titles and they win the match. Huge pop when he Hardy wins, boys by retain. The way. Uh, Big fucking pop. This was fucking gas. This was awesome, man. Yeah, awesome match. Great bumps. Great finish. Well, the only thing I'm interested in is Lita's red underwear. Whoa! Dude, holy shit! <laughs> These guys are fucking. They come. Oh. They come fresh off a cage match with ladder match with travel with promos. They fucking just killed each other. They almost did a concerto on the tippy top of the ladder. <laughs> The first thing they do when they grab the lines across going nuts is, oh my god, red booties are shot! What the hell is wrong with you? I bet Jared you looked at him like super hell. Dude, Jared probably looked at him crazy. He probably did the Stewie Griffin head turn <laughs> looking at Jay Long. Like, oh, I mean, 
Honey boys. <laughs> yeah, Lawler definitely got browbeat during the commercial. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you fucking shit? Are you freak? fucking serious right Dude, I'm now? I'm gonna fuck all your wives. I'll fuck every single wife if you keep fucking doing this. <laughs> this is crazy because Edgy Christian cannot challenge for those belts no more. Yeah. Ever again in their entire life. Well, as long as the Hardys are champions. That's oh, okay. like doing a stipulation like that it's and big. then having them actually lose and have them not charge for the belts made for a way cooler moment like the otherwise, you know, like it's, going through with it was was cool. Do they do? Is that where the fucking conquistador thing happens? Oh, shit. I don't know. Is that how Edge of Christian with the belts? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> is, I'm trying to fucking see when. Okay, Hardy's. Yeah, huh. Let's see. Hardy's was... Uh, so they won it on Forgiven. Then Edge and Christian win them back at No Mercy because they wrestled as Los Conquistadores. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. And then so the Hardys cool. win them back as Los Conquistadores. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And then right That's to censor so cool. fucking win them. So backstage segment, uh, Gerald and Pat are backstage being interrogated by Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> They're both sitting there, like as if they were bullied into this room to sit next to each other and being <laughs> accused of hitting Stone Cold with a car. Uh, yeah, Joe says he was home in Florida with a hundred and two degree fever. And Pat two, says three. <laughs> Pat says you were home. I was home for an in anniversary. <laughs> yeah. He said he was in Florida as well. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Steve Austin doesn't buy this shit for a minute. Yeah, he says, don't you remember how to go home for an anniversary? You were there in Detroit. And I says, ah, you guys, shut up. You're making me sick. I know you're lying because people told me you were there. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I know neither one of you did it. You know how I know? Neither one of you have a sack enough to run over Stone Cold. That's great. You don't have balls enough to hit me with a car. But if I find out you know who ran me over, I will track both of you down, and I'll stomp a squealing worm out of your ass. Do you understand me? No, no sir, no. I don't. Steve, I don't no, we don't it. understand. Squealing what worm. Did. worm? Steve, squealing worm doesn't catch on. Sadly. He should have kept doing it. <laughs> a squealing worm and uh he leaves and briscoe and patterson are arguing after he leaves and pat says you you're sick you smoke too much <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay and they're like what they say that yeah. like, what? <laughs> what so china's walking she's talking jr says there's china nothing can be finer mamacita uh, then we get Mick Foley voting propaganda. Oh, yeah. New you, new voters have to let their voices be heard, James. And we haven't heard from George Bush or <laughs> Al Gore. <laughs> They're trying to convince George Bush and Al Gore to come to SmackDown to talk to the future of our country. <laughs> By yeah, so insulting come to SmackDown. them. Get out here now. Come to SmackDown. Yeah, Al Gore is too busy inventing the internet. <laughs> he doesn't have much time for this. SmackDown your vote, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Dip shit. Uh, so now it's time for the Chinatown Hall. China Playboy segment where she's here to reveal her Playboy. Yeah, she was in Playboy butt-ass naked Midian Super style. Super naked, yeah. <laughs> maybe not Midian <laughs> style. Uh, maybe not, not Midian pimples. style. Yeah, no, probably. yeah, probably not. Well, uh, Lawler says, oh, I can't stand up right now. I have a fat uh, fucking butter. <laughs> yeah, was it was in a red face. <laughs> Dude, look you. at my fucking hard dick. <laughs> Shit, oh, shut up. Sit down. I'll fucking go to sleep. <laughs> Give us all a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the first time in WWF history, they decided they're going to let China get her flowers. They said, here's your, here's your time to get your flowers uh, because we have fucking treated you like shit for your whole fucking career. Uh, and now it's time to give you some flowers here. And it, de it definitely feels like something someone would say at like a hall of fame speech yeah Some like it was least. almost like she knew like yeah. her career was winding down here i feel dude okay i got that same feeling too and i was That's like I is thought, she yeah. gone soon but she's not right she's around for another year gets her neck broken yeah I they think. do that fucking stupid ass angle with ivory yeah. wasn't it yeah 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 exactly yeah, yeah. oh my yeah, goodness yeah where they sit her down with what was it jr we talked about that yeah, they sit I her down with jr yeah, yeah and they do yeah, that whole fucking like oh yeah it was brutal um but yeah like Great way to put it, James. Like giving her flowers because she, you know, she first part of this promo she's talking about like magazines and tabloids talking about how other women looked compared to her, and it was kind of long. I was like, I don't know where this is going. Then she gets into the part like you know she's getting kind of emotional about it, talking about how long she's worked on her uh, career and uh, making her body look how it does, and she's uh you know she's been ridiculed ridiculed excuse me for years and pissed her off, so she was working out at the gym and 
Uh, she felt she reached a lot of success, and she's gone far beyond what people have said about her. And she's worked her way to the top of a male-dominated business, fought men in the ring, gained respect of men and women back there, and she's fought the odds. And and she believes she's a you know she is a pioneer, and that's why uh, her friends named her the ninth wonder of the world. She's kind of starts getting emotional. Yeah, and by the way, also Ben Stiller is on the cover of the Playboy. I just want everybody to understand yeah, that Ben what Stiller the fuck? is here. I forgot about that. I feel like I yeah, always ben forget Stiller's about that. Ben on that Playboy. We actually <laughs> saw that in Japan. That was fucking Dude, crazy. Oh we my did God. see it in Japan. I yeah, feel you're like right. I wanted you to. Buy, I wanted somebody to buy that. Really yeah, bad. no, I was <laughs> looking for it. You had we it. You had it. Then we didn't buy it. Yeah, we I didn't buy it. I went back. It was gone. I was like, "Where's the oh, Ben Stiller yeah. Playboy?" <laughs> yeah, I was gonna buy it, but I ended up not being able to. Sadly. But yeah, a good portion of this fucking promo is you know, emotional stuff. It's it's it gives her a ton of time to it talk did about feel her shit. Like, it did feel like a career ending. Like it was like a heartfelt like, dude. All right, my my long road to get where I did, and this is it or whatever. Yeah, well, she's been I'm, pretty rough since Triple H got with Stephanie. I imagine yeah. it got even worse. Brutal. After that. Oh, oh my god, right, brutal. Yeah. She said, yeah. "I would like to thank WWF for giving the freak an opportunity. I like to thank the guys in the back because you guys have supported me all through the special times of my life." And I'd like to thank the fans for wanting to see me naked. I said, no, man, no, come on. Dude, I, by the way, I just want to, I just want to mention, uh, China thanks the WWF for giving this freak a chance. And the way she said it seemed like she did not want to say that. And it seemed like she they, was like uh, yeah, saying it, weird, it because right? she was asked to thank the WWF or she thought she needed to for the segment. Like she had to. Sure. Yeah, she yeah. had to. Because her, I mean, her tone and the way she said it, like, obviously, I mean, come on. The WWF was not nice to her. I mean, like, come no, on, man, they were pretty brutal to her. It's a shame that this promo led to the fucking rest of this segment. I will say this much, too. A lot of empty seats behind China here. You might want to start figuring that out, Raw. <laughs> WCW is coming. No TNN was... Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Raw, Raw will be done and not just on TNN. So you better watch your ass. Nitro's coming. Yeah. Especially you start doing this bullshit, right? The censor music hits right? and these dudes right? come out. Are you kidding oh, me? No. Val Venus! <laughs> He's here. Steven Richards, <laughs> Val Venus, the good father, and Bull Buchanan. Baseball Buchanan. Come on. Dude, what did he do wrong? He didn't do nothing No one wrong. even gave Val Venus the black slacks memo. Dudes out here in the white ones. <laughs> He's Probably because no one talks to Val Venus because he's an idiot and a bitch. <laughs> Get out of our company. <laughs> Val Venus says that this shit is like pornography. Get out of here. Boycott this magazine. He says China's not even worth seeing naked. Oh, come on. That's ridiculous. And then that's Latino the heat music hits, and that's where the ah. shit starts picking up. Dude, Eddie comes out. He's over his fucking hell here. He says, did I hear you correctly, S.A.? You say China's not worth it. You're talking about the hottest, sweetest, sexiest looking mamacita on Playboy naked. And you're saying she's not worth it. What are you, stupid? <laughs> Dude, this is, this is bar none, my favorite Eddie era. This is like my favorite Eddie era ever. He's so good on the mic. He fucking He's has so super good. unique look. Like his yeah, matches yeah, were yeah. fantastic. I'm so fucking pissed that he had that stupid injury when he came to WWF initially. I know. That sucks. He lost out so know. much time there. But like, yeah, this is this is he was so good. Like everything he says here, it's so it's so crazy going from fucking Val Venus talking to Eddie. It's like Eddie it's is so much better. Yeah, he yeah. was ready for the big push the fucking second he got there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, it was awesome. and, and Latino Heat era with the with the hair and that just everything. This is <laughs> roses, <laughs> China. Yeah. yeah, this was all awesome. Very good stuff. That was here. a great weapon in the games too, by the way. The Eddie roses. Yeah, <laughs> dude, they were. They got the pipe <laughs> in them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Eddie says, uh, you know, China, I'm going to do you an honor tonight and I'm going to defend, uh, your honor. If you let me, I'll put the intercontinental title on the line against one of these stupid homies. If they got the, I think he, what did he say? Pantalones? I don't know what he said here. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know. Eddie's just put the title on the line. I'll defend your honor against one of these homies. He's oh, I got the hottest, sexiest mama sita. I ever said, okay, look at this. Look at this mama sita. I'm like, oh shit. That's what I'm Dude, talking was, about. This is that he real. He was so good at that gimmick that I swear as a kid, I was like, oh, they're dating for real. Yeah, they are definitely fucking. Yeah, I definitely yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> they had such good chemistry. Yeah. No, I mean, Eddie's one of the best ever. I mean, he was really. Um, Stephen Richards does say in the background that Val Venus does accept this challenge. Mr. Venus is happy to accept your invitation. When do they, then, uh, they change his name to Sean Morley, don't they? That's okay. So that's after Right to Censor. That's when he's Eric Bischoff's assistant. Oh, right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? They didn't change his name from Val Venus in the Right to Censor? The that, good father, no, but this didn't. guy's name is Big <laughs> Penis. <laughs> Dude, I also don't think they changed his finisher name, too. I think it's still the money shot. The money shot. What, <laughs> yeah, they put yeah, any well, thought into this at all? No, of course not. <laughs> Holy, man. Um, but yeah, then they, uh, of course, he accepts the challenge, and then China tells right to censor that whenever you pick up my Playboy and see my ass, you can kiss it. Ah, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. 
So we go backstage. Kurt Angle is looking at the sports pages, talking about the guys he could beat in the Olympics. <laughs> I could beat him. I beat him. I could beat him. <laughs> Trish Stratus comes up and talks to him about, of course, his feud with Triple H currently. Yeah, he, she says, hey, Kurt, you see China and Playboy? And Kurt says, oh, I don't read Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> She says, well, what Stone Cold did when you offered him a uh, friendship was disgusting. And if you offered me a token of friendship, I'd cherish it forever. And Kurt says, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oblivious Kurt Angle with the He's women the is like, I love that. Yeah. Steve Blackman does it later on with Trish. I thought that was cool. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. That is awesome. Trish says, do you have that medal? And Kurt says, yeah, I have it in my bag. I always carry these with me, you know? Trish says, you mind if I try it on? And she tries it on. And the medal disappears in her cleavage. <laughs> It is which, is, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It is fucking insane. <laughs> they do a really up close, tight shot on it. Yeah. It's crazy. crazy replica here. Very, very small metal here for Steve Austin that he had. <laughs> I thought it was a very big metal, very good to get you. Oh, metal, no. Actually. It was very sad and petite. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, it zooms in, and Kurt's eyes almost bulge out of his head, and he says, she says, This is good, right? And Kurt says, Oh, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> And true. <laughs> <laughs> That's for true. <laughs> true, true. Well, Raw is brought to you by Squaresoft, which has a new game coming out called Parasite oh. Eve 2. Do you have any idea what this game is? I'm going to assume it's a, a import from Japan. I was correct. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah. Action um, role-playing survival horror video game re released for the PlayStation. It was published in Japan in 1999. And... Is okay, it gas? Yeah. Probably not. Ah! I don't it know, man. Like it it has kinda, decent ratings. Kind of looks like from the cover and all that shit I'm looking at, like some Resident Evil type shit. So it does, it does look like, look like Resident Silent Evil. Hill or something like that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like sure. So it, it might be gas. I don't know. Yeah. I, I hope it's uh like eight hours or less. That'd be awesome. <laughs> no, it's sixteen. Just look. One, yeah, look up a long play. Oh well, I found a long play that's twelve hours. Eleven and a half. Yeah, eleven and a half is usually how yeah. long it goes. So that's not bad. I'll take an eleven and a half game. I'll take a game that could be on the weekend. You yeah, know why I mean? not? Yeah, I one, you know, like two two sessions. I'll take that. Yeah, that's easy. You know, that's what I'm talking about. That's not real I shit. I love man. that. I love that. I love uh, like beating games on the weekend. Like if you if you can if it's twenty plus, I, I hesitate. I'll be honest. I hesitate. Sometimes. Yeah, 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 man. If I got to retain that information for three sessions, whoo, all right. Yeah, you're asking a lot, man. I'm like I already played everything you got. Like at this point, I'm just fucking yeah, going, going. Yeah, you're, you're just fucking like jerking me off now, man. Come on. Yeah, come on, man. I'm ready to go. I'm ready what to blow. You know? <laughs> Give me nine, yeah, ten, eleven, yeah. and then I'm done. I'm out. So uh, Raw is also brought to you by Right Guard Extreme Sport. You Ooh, stinky, stinky, stinky idiot. That recess look at, nerd. Look at you idiots. <laughs> uh, also, Raw is brought to you by WWF Shop Zone, where you can get all the best WWF apparel. Uh, they ran out of sponsors, huh? Couldn't get a, another sponsor there. Had to fit their own shop there. Yeah, that's based. What about Presto? What the fuck? Presto was sponsored the pay per view. They I didn't think? pay enough. Yeah, just Damn. Pay All right, whatever. So now we have the first blood match between Chris Jericho and X Pac. What the fuck is this X Pac logo on his gear? First off, let me just say this: Jericho with the girl Tron, yes sir. <laughs> Boys, <laughs> let's go. Legendary, let's go. Legendary Hall of Fame. Hall X Pac with candidate. the music, also X Pac. X Pac. That's right, not what it says, but that's, that's fine. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Not real. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tony. That's what I'm talking about right Tony's there. Tony's wrong too. It's okay. Nah, it's nah, that's all right. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, no, it did the, no, well, you're close, but it's fine. I don't what care is this logo? if you think it's not Xbox. It <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. I feel like it's Xbox wrong. is. Uh, yeah, well, X Pac is just you know he didn't even look like he wanted to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he looked like he was. This is a, a this is a lost gear. This this doesn't make it into any games. I don't think. I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. Um. I actually, you know what? This, you know, this is my favorite match of the night. I'm not even kidding. Not this joking. match. I like this match, and I also enjoyed X Pog's antics during this match. And yeah, I don't know how much you noticed this. Up. Okay, you did notice. Okay, good. Yeah, how yeah, did you no. not? <laughs> yeah. Like this was this was like, I for a second I legitimately thought they were like. Kick each other's ass for real. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> like, was just, yeah, me too. Me too. So uh, I actually enjoyed this one a lot. I mean, favorite match of the night over the ladder is a little egregious, but I did enjoy this match a lot. What it was. Yes. yes. For what it was, especially for a match that was fucking two minutes long. Once again, yeah, yeah. you can't have a good match at two. You can't have a good match at eight. You can't have a good match at 15. You can't have a good match at 30. <laughs> There's a lot that happens here. Yeah. In two minutes, which is crazy. Um, so Jericho rushes the ramp and attacks X-Pac. Before yeah, he could is, even make his fucking entrance. Yeah, Xbox is not even out of the curtain yet, and, and Jericho's at the top of the ramp to jump him. <laughs> um, Jericho then lights up X-Pac with some gnarly chops, man. Yeah, they're going. Real gnarly. They're going. Spinning heel kick. 
Jericho's unreal at this point. Like Jericho's yes. work rate at this point is absolutely unmatched, especially yeah, at this right. middle of the card spot he's in right now. Unfucking match work. Rate. Looks he good was, too. Looks great. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Girltron. What can you? What more fuck you fuck ask for for this guy? <laughs> What's my bitch, 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 bitch? Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, there's a bit where X Pac gets clotheslined over the top to the floor. So Jericho clotheslines him to the floor. <laughs> God damn. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude, X Pac is on the floor. Uh, this is where I figured out what the finish of the match was. He's near the timekeeper's area, and there's a bottle on the floor. And he's like, he like pushes it to the side and he yells something. I said, oh, that's kind of weird. He's acting like kind of strange in there. He gets back in the ring. Oh, so he tries to hit Jericho with a chair on the floor. Jericho dodges it. He they swings go, for the fucking he, fences. He, he's pissed. Way. He's pissed. They go into the ring. X-Pac gloms Jericho in the ring, looks at the timekeeper's area and yells, Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? what is, on the floor, on the floor, he yelled, 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 on the floor, the floor, yells, fuck in the ring. I said, what? What happened here? I'm like trying to find out. X-Pac keeps looking back at the timekeeper's area. I said, does he have heat with like Mark Eaton, the fucking Stone Cold throwing the beer guy? I said, what happened here? Why is he so fucking mad? I don't know. He wouldn't be here, man. He said, this shit, look, man. I, get the yeah, fuck he wasn't going to WCW. <laughs> <laughs> Nitro. <laughs> you don't want to go there, bro. <laughs> yeah, no way. yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Jericho gets hung up on the barricade. He's like laying over and Xbox spin kicks him in the ass. <laughs> 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 they get back over the barricade. Jericho does a bulldog onto the stairs where he like runs by Jericho, then does like X Games off the stairs to fucking bulldog Based. Xbox onto it, which was awesome. Yeah, it, was it was awesome. Cool. Jericho swings a chair at X Pac's head full force. Dude, and cr- I mean, like, legit. They are, like, if they don't duck, you're going to die. You're like, dead. yeah, you're like, dead. this is crazy. The amount of heat in this two minute match is nuts. Like, it's palpable. Yeah. X Pac ducks, thankfully, hits the ring post. Then X-Pac goes underneath the timekeeper's table and he picks up what seems to be either two bottles, two glass bottles or <laughs> one glass bottle that was broken in half, which may be why he was angry earlier. Yeah. He picks up, he's a pile of bottles in his hand and he <laughs> smashes Jericho in the fucking face with it as I hard think, as he can. I think that's what happened so earlier. Like he probably went to the outside and like grabbed the chair yeah. or whatever and the, and the bottle was probably in the chair or something. It, broke, it fell yeah. off and broke. <laughs> fucking goddamn! <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so he just has a handful of broken he just glass. Gra- he just gla- grabs a bunch of broken glass and just gloves it in his fucking head. Fuck! He, oh, he that's fucking, funny. Dude, he that's smashes Jericho happened. with this shit. You're yeah, right. He smashes Jericho with this shit. They go into the ring, and I don't know if Jericho is bleeding. So X Park starts grinding broken glass into Jericho's <laughs> bleed, to bleed. Make him bleed, and then he starts bleeding, and the ref calls for the bell. That's funny as hell. Man. I said, that's "Holy crazy. shit!" Yeah, what? that's definitely what happened. Up. You know, I was thinking about it, like when, when he said, "God damn on the floor." I saw the yeah. green bottle behind him. Yeah, I didn't even think for a second, and it, you know, it probably maybe not it wasn't this, but. He sure. definitely struggled with the chair for a second and then took a second <laughs> and looked at the ground and then like went to the floor and I was like, God the fuck damn. is going on? God damn. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's I don't know what's worse, that one or him going, him being center of the ring, staring at Time Keeper until <laughs> yelling, fuck. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he got fucking ass blasted backstage oh, yeah. this so, man. But he was probably so checked out, it didn't even fucking matter. Nah, yeah. yeah. You want to go to Nitro? I'll tell you right now, buddy. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he cracks the bottle, fucking grinds him down, he bleeds, the ref calls for the bell, X-Pac wins the match. So I'm assuming they just needed X-Pac to like win the feud, but they wanted Jericho to keep the heat. Sure, okay. They're like, I mean, okay, yeah, X-Pac just sense. has to win this feud because it just makes sense, and then fucking Jericho can we beat got, the dog we shit We gotta get you him. away from X-Pac. <laughs> yeah, really. This guy's a loose kid. <laughs> it was good at Nitro, and Jericho says, I gotta get the fuck away from this guy. Dude, he's trying to get Nitro with him. Get me the fuck out of here. I gotta go. <laughs> so X-Pac wins. X-Pac goes underneath the ring to get his fucking nunchucks. He's got his nunchucks. Yes. You fucking going crazy. He <laughs> nunchuck Dude, style. Watcha, watcha. He is fucking getting it. <laughs> Jericho low blows him, grabs the nunchucks, does his own <laughs> nunchuck routine, and then hits X Pac right in the fucking forehead with him. <laughs> Dude, square on the forehead with the fucking nunchucks, and then X Pac is bleeding. Yeah, X Pac's now bleeding. I wrote down at this point, this might be my favorite match of the year I've ever seen. 
<laughs> X-Pac is pissed the whole fucking match. Jericho is lighting him up, which I'm sure didn't make this any it was easier. Was not any better, yeah. Yeah, and, and fucking intense and urgent. nunchucked in the head. Nunchucks, then, cool moves, yeah. good finish. After match, crazy shit. Jericho then grabs his ass on the table. He's bleeding, by the way, X-Pac. The They're table. both bleeding. Yes. They're getting the announce table. Jericho locks in the walls of Jericho and X-Pac. <laughs> X-Pac. Oh! Oh! <laughs> He's dying on this fucking table. Yeah, this is funny as hell, man. What, what a, a great fucking match. Yeah, wow. A two minute. Like, can you imagine being pitched? Just, all right, hey, guys, you guys have two minutes for a first blood match tonight. And I then, would like, have no clue. Yeah, and then they end up making like one of the f- best segments of the night out of this dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, dude even thinking of xbox said he's probably already fuming that they got two that his spot gets fucked up <laughs> breaks the bottle fuck yeah. <laughs> i bet the matches he was supposed to be shorter than that with the bottle broke he's i don't know what to do he's like yeah, what do we do to figure things out. The yeah. jericho poses on the apron and he's bleeding and the crowd's like fired up for him so i was like oh that's a good shot yeah, he's that's getting cool. over yeah jericho's yeah. getting over over um i hope his career turns out all right nah <laughs> I think he goes back to WCW. Oh shit! The no, Xbox said you got to take me back. No, you don't want to go there. I think they call there, him dude. Lenny Lane. Oh, oh good, no. yeah, that works out for really well. <laughs> so backstage, Triple H and Stephanie are still in the exact same spot, chilling. Yeah. Um, Steve Austin does come in, and he is fucking <laughs> irate. Yeah, Stephanie is unhappy as well. She says, Stone Cold, you know, I gave you your hat back yesterday, and I said Shane knew who ran you over, and I said it couldn't have been any McMahon family, and then you stunned Shane three times and pour beer on him. That was an embarrassment. <laughs> Stone Cold I do that there. to everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, watch the fucking show. She's a new TNN viewer. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Austin looks at Triple H and says, you're going to shut her up, or am I going to have to? <laughs> Triple H says, heard you were looking for me yesterday. And Austin says, everyone knows I'm conducting an investigation here, and you're one of the prime suspects. Someone had me locked up in the parking garage so that your little friend, meaning you, could run me over with a car. Which only makes sense, because since I've been gone, you've had made a hell of a name for yourself. So I want you to look me in the eyes and give me your story. And Triple H looks at him and he says, you want to know my story? Yeah. Well, now, Austin, if I wanted to take you out, I'm the kind of guy that would look you dead in your eye and do the job like a man. But I did not run you over with a car, and I don't know. That is not true, by the way. (laughs) Yeah, not true at all. (laughs) That is not true. (laughs) But gaslighting is, you know, wrestling 101. And also, Austin solved the entire case. He just did, actually. He said the exact (laughs) case. Yeah, you're right. He solved it right here. This is it. (laughs) Well, either you're a liar or a crazy son of a bitch. Or maybe, maybe you're telling the truth. He's not, Austin. He's not telling the fucking truth. (laughs) He knows he fucking did it. So we go backstage, Michael Cole with The Rock for an interview. <laughs> the Rock, of course, is the WWF champion, and uh, he asked him about his match tonight with Chris Benoit. Yeah, he says, uh, Benoit, you claim you were screwed. McFoley said you were screwed, and since you claim you're the best wrestler, let The Rock give you some wrestling advice. <laughs> the fact of the matter is this. You tried to pin The Undertaker, and Undertaker put his phone on the rope. Which means you won absolutely nothing. <laughs> Damn. All right. I cle- cleared that up real quick. Easy. easy. Uh, so You're fuck you. Two- yeah. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the two-time WF champion. You're not the one-time WF champion. But what you are is this. You are the all-time, without a shadow of a doubt, punk ass son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my fucking god! Yo, someone take the microphone now! Someone take the microphone now! Holy shit! Fucking oh my crazy! God. The rock Put is so the rope, good, you dumb bastard! <laughs> if you <laughs> submit, <laughs> oh, I'm surprised he didn't make fun of his nickname or anything. He kind of he was kind of easy on him here. Uh, he was super he nice the, about it. He said the rabbit Wolverine will go against the Brahma Bull, and one more time. You will hit rock bottom, and you will smell what the rock is cooking. Yeah, he still puts him over a little bit. Still, still respects yeah. him enough to call him the rabid Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. you know, still, still, he, he was just like, "Look, man, you didn't win the match, but I will face you tonight, <laughs> and I'll kill uh, you. And, and, you know, I'll win. Like that's what you should say. And I, and yeah. I will win. I'm the fucking face. I'm gonna fucking it was win. A of course, good promo. It's it short. Was. Short, yeah. sweet, fucking rock. Got the whole thing over. That's how you do a fucking promo right there. For real. <laughs> you want absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Put on the road. You are stupid as hell. Uh, we get Eddie Guerrero versus Val Venus with the IC title on the line. Yeah, I mean, this... Uh, I don't remember shit about this it's, match. <laughs> yeah, so hot start for this one. Like, pretty much every single match tonight, I think, had a hot start. 
Oh, uh, Mick Foley also said that Bull Buchanan, they saw in commentary that Mick Foley said that Bull Buchanan and Goodfather had to stay backstage. They were not allowed out here. And then Lawler says, uh, he's Lawler on commentary is talking about China having a tattoo in a very, very special place. Anyway, double underhook That's suplex true, for two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says that and Jerry says, okay. <laughs> Would you yeah, right. fucking give it a rest, you fucking freak? <laughs> give us a fucking break. <laughs> it's hot as hell in this arena. We've God gone through this whole uh, fucking show. I gotta watch Val Venus wrestle. <laughs> I listen to you. <laughs> so Val Venus uses ground cheese and I hits a. Watch this. <laughs> he does ground cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Val Venus crazy ground cheese it's a butterfly suplex um, blah 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 China rips off Stephen Richards pants <laughs> yeah, he Dude, does. It's that's a blah 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 is exactly what happens there nothing happens Val, Val Venus, Venus has got to be top 5 top 10 worst motherfucking wrestlers in WWE history a, man he's guy top is, 5 biggest bitches too the fuck is wrong sure. you man get the fuck out of here he, he goes up top for the money shot which they haven't renamed Eddie gets up uh, there and cuts him off. Then he hits a super. Yeah, why have they not renamed anything for this guy? They do not care about him. That's why yeah, they want him gone. Yeah, they don't give a Nitro. Give this fucking guy a Nitro. He'd do great on Nitro. Yeah, go fucking team with Prince IK. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing over here? So Steven Richards gets up on the apron. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about no more. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. I promise. Steven gets up on the apron. Ref yells at him. China comes around, grabs his legs, then China rips his pants off and exposes Steven Richards' entire ass. He's hang His ass is hanging out of his underwear. And this is also where I learned that Stevie Richards wears knee braces. I had no fucking idea. Just one under the pants. Yeah, just one. Uh, and then Eddie rolls up Val for the win here. And JR on commentary says, White shocks, Steven Richards got uh, pantsed. And Lawler says, He's got white butt cheeks, too. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Go to extra <laughs> up already. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, take Cat with you. Yeah, go and just take your fucking wife out of here, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, Valvey's got to get the fuck. Look, man, I apologize also to Prince Ik. You're not. I, you didn't. You no, Prince Ik was fine. He Prince Ik deserved to be teamed up yeah. with Valvey. But that's yeah. what he yeah. I'm done. sorry. But I that's apologize. what he would have done. Yeah, you're right. You, you would have gotten Valvey as your team, Prince Ik, or he would have been in the Misfits in action, which is I, probably where he belonged to be. Yeah, you're right. And the Misfits in action were just shitty. Right to censor. He would have been, been fucking been. Corporal Ball Licker. <laughs> 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 Tiny penis. Yeah, okay, there you go. yeah, that's actually what he would have been yeah, telling good. you, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I apologize. I like Corporal Ball Licker. Though. That's good. That's Corporal Ball Licker is good. I like that one. I, I like the idea, Tony, that they didn't give him a fucking name extra. He's just Tiny Penis. <laughs> What's well, his rank in the, you know, he's tiny. <laughs> tiny Penis is. I, I probably would end up liking him. So, maybe his name can't be Tiny Penis. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I love that Eddie Guerrero had to fucking roll up Val Venus. I would have pat and smoked this clown six ways for Sunday. Every finish I got, you taking one tonight, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, the Intercontinental Champion could have get it done against Val I would have gave China a chair and could chair to your ass in the center of fucking <laughs> We would have put that's just me. three ladders in the ring for you, <laughs> and you'd know what you're fucking doing tonight, bitch. Yeah, you're waking up inside Prince IK, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Sorry, Prince IK, we apologize. We we like I'm so sorry, <laughs> yeah. Prince IK, but you you know that's just true. We like, <laughs> you know we like true. Air Paris on this goddamn show, by yeah, the way. I Air want that Paris, to be known. Shout, shout out, out fucking Air, Air Paris. Paris. You'll be nowhere near Valvina's brother. No, I promise bro, you that. I, if I was running an e fed or something, I would have had you just pat your smoking Valvina's ass. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I would have drafted Valvina's over there and had you pack his ass up. I'll tell you that much. All right, so it shows Crash Holly at WWF New York trying to buy a drink. Um, yeah. He gets carded, and they say he's not old enough. I don't <laughs> understand this joke. Because <laughs> he looks young. He looks like uh, but he, young. But he, but he, but he, has, yeah. he has two forms of ID that are legit. And <laughs> yeah, they, they say it's real age. <laughs> so sorry, I don't understand this joke. And then he walks away and leaves IDs at the bar. He doesn't grab his IDs. Does it, your name doesn't, you tell me your IDs. name is Crash Holly. This does not say Crash Holly. You gotta get the fuck out of here, man. Oh, okay. He shouldn't be drinking anyway. William Regal. <laughs> Now it's time for the William Regal Town Hall. <laughs> this is um, my this is one of my favorite summers of all time. This is the one, by the way. William Regal is here as a goodwill ambassador. They play this fucking British ass music the whole time he's out here. If you marry me, I'll dig for you and rake for you. Tally Whacker has to die here. <laughs> <laughs> you knew his ass oh, was shit. getting pat and smoked by Stone Cold Steve Austin. If this is the most 
This is the most please stun me ass segment I've ever seen yeah. in my it, life. It might be my favorite one, bro, for real. It's oh so my God. fucking funny, dude. William Regal's out here. He's Steve Stephen William Regal. And he says he's uh he's chosen to share with everyone is one of his favorite authors, another favorite famous William, William Shakespeare. Oh yeah. And, and he will recite to you in its entirety William Shakespeare's Hamlet. Feel free to join along if you wish. So he starts fucking reading. He's reading this fucking thing. And then disturbs Stone Cold <laughs> song hits. <laughs> JR says, that ain't Shakespeare, that's a Texas rattlesnake. So a oh, fucking Stone Cold walks down the ramp. He's oh. not even like he's emotionless. He's not like walking talking. He's not Stone really Cold bobbing just his head. Hates British people. Like this is <laughs> this is way ahead of its fucking time. This shit should come back and they should do this every week. <laughs> <laughs> NXT UK needs to be brought back for Stone Cold to be yeah, the GM. Stone Cold just stuns it. That's their segment every week on this show is somebody from NXT UK gets fucking smoked by Steve by Austin. Stone Cold, yeah. <laughs> so, dude, he walks down to the ring. He walks up the stairs, enters the ring, walks up to Regal, hits a stunner. His music doesn't stop. He just gets up, walks down to the <laughs> ring, and just fucking leaves. <laughs> I love this so goddamn much, dude. Yeah, it was, this was awesome. It was the most... I don't give a fuck stunner of all time. Yeah. It is tremendous. It was good. It was just exactly what I needed at this point in the show. Yeah. Um, so Chris Benoit is in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Learning how to box. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ronda Rousey is good to back. <laughs> and uh, we get The Rock versus Chris Benoit with Shane McMahon for the WWF title. Now, what the What the hell? What is Shane McMahon doing with Benoit? And Lawler says, I, you know what this means? Chris Benoit is going to be a new champion. Anyway. Don't have no mercy is brought to you by Presto. <laughs> yeah, 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 fuck it. Anyway, The Rock's here. You big, biggest champ of the night, biggest pop of the night, fucking He's, best champion dude, of all time. He, is this his best, like, is this him in the best physical condition of his career, you think? He looks fucking, yeah. Well, you know, he comes back in John Cena style and fucking he's shredded ah, to this shit. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. Fair enough. All right, anyway, Fair enough. Enough. All right. right. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. No, but no, if you're talking about, all right, let's just say his career ended when he fucking left to go to Hollywood. Okay. Like, yes, yes it is. And he looks fucking fantastic, and this is his best I look. I forgot and... he came back, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember, I forgot the John Cena shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I only remember it because, like... The video games? The memes, no, not the video games. Oh, the sure, yeah. <laughs> like, the, sure. the every time someone plays that song <laughs> with the graphic. Oh, yeah, More yeah. Shizhi, yeah. my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me yeah. to say, tell me yeah, more. like that shit's funny as hell, man. So, that's all you remember that shit. But yeah, uh, well, what about Presto, the makers of the pizzazz pizza oven? God damn, oven of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight we got Chris Benoit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, not Radical's theme song. It's like the precursor to whatever. Oh yeah, it's uh, din- yeah, it's the No Mercy song. It was yeah. one of your right, no right. Mercy. Yeah, 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 you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about this. There's a chant when they get out there and they start this match <laughs> that it's, I mean, it's, it's literally the loudest channel night. Shane's a pussy. I could not believe that they didn't censor that. Yeah. What happens if the whole arena just started chanting fuck? Just, <laughs> just, just fuck. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, they I, just like is, mute the whole show. Do you <laughs> think they didn't a, know what they were saying? There was a time before. I think I feel like I've seen them bleep the crowd before they definitely bleep like been, shut the yeah. fuck up yeah right? right but what if they were just chant just chanting fuck Ch- fuck, fuck, fuck fuck the whole God. match all like, night long <laughs> just the whole match ben Wavers is rock fuck 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 <laughs> fuck just the whole match there if you really you know during the era where they wanted to like boycott raw or uh what was it called not boycott what's the word uh no, that's probably right, right. Take over Raw, like when the Brian shit happened. Oh, that's the yeah. way you should have did it. You should have yelled yeah, fuck, fuck the yeah, whole time. Yeah, all those awesome. people watch AEW now. <laughs> yeah, <you're right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole section of fans do not watch this shit no more. So that's crazy to think about. Yeah, you're right. Um, but yeah, huge Shane's, Shane's a pussy. A pussy. Um, and then Rock. <laughs> it's so loud. It's the loudest chant of the night. <laughs> it's so loud that they can't even ignore it. They try to ignore it. And then like Jerry Lawler, like, oh, I, I think I know what they're saying. <laughs> Jared, oh, yeah. Pussy! Yeah, right. <laughs> Would you fucking go to hell? <laughs> Labia! So, <laughs> the, rock, the Rock locks in the sharpshooter on Chris Benoit, and you really gotta give it to The Rock here. He is gonna do that move badly, <laughs> and it is going to look like shit every single fucking time. But it will be his shitty move. And Shane then punches The Rock of the sharpshooter, and he fucking cartoon dives out of it. 
Shane also leans in. He's like, he doesn't get in the ring. He leans in underneath the top of the middle rope and fucking just decks Rock. <laughs> Benoit then hits the German suplexes three in a row, but Rock reverses on the third into a DDT for a two. Yes. Benoit diving headbutt. Dude got crazy fucking air on this one. Unbelievable air. By the way, just before this, I'm surprised you didn't note this because I know you love this. Benoit hit a gut kick out of an Irish whip. <laughs> oh, fuck. I didn't see that. I didn't write that down. But yes, the Irish whip gut kick. I'm glad, I'm glad not, that you know may, that. Maybe Rock just hit. I don't know if it was an Irish whip. Maybe that's why it was different. But Rock hit the ropes and Benoit just gut kicked them. <laughs> okay. If it's Irish whip gut kick, yeah, I would probably be it's like, still yeah, there great. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Benoit diving headbutt. Crazy air. Camera shot. Super dope. It's very cool. Very cool. More people should do the diving headbutt regularly. Yeah, it's more fucking often. sweet. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, it's good. It's a good move. Yeah, if Harley Race did it, you can do it. Harley Race could do a lot, though. <laughs> yeah, you haven't even seen actually half of what King <laughs> Harley Race could do. Maybe one day somewhere you will be able to see that. Someday it'll be unveiled to you. <laughs> <laughs> Shane pulls Earl Hebner out of the ring. Earl runs over to Shane and starts fucking berating. He's just he, yelling at him. He shoves him and chases him. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Don't touch idiot. me. You little idiot pussy. This is classic Hebner spot. Yeah, um, Benoit then throws Rock into Hebner and takes he takes a bump off the apron. He's down. Um, JR and Jerry Lawler are begging for a new ref. They are begging. They're asking J for someone JR in the back. JR is Lawler says, ah, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, this one's fine. I like that, though. I like that they're asking for the the, the ref. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah, because they know. You know, just one and done. You can say, hey, we need a new ref out here. You don't have to, like, keep it going, but, like, Harp I like it. Thing. Yeah. Um, Shane then comes in and lines rock in the back and does his little dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. As he's doing his little dance, rock fucking stands up immediately <laughs> and stares him down. When he did that, all I could think was the vine. Boom. boom. <laughs> uh, rock with his spine buster on Shane. Benoit then clotheslines rock. Out Close of his the, fucking shoes. Dude, he clotheslines the fuck out of him here, man. Uh, Benoit grabs a chair, and no. then JR says, There's martial law here. <laughs> I thought that was an awesome That's awesome. Yeah. JR's the best. This is the most overbooked, crazy fucking, like, Rock couldn't have just beat Benoit. No, <laughs> like, they, they were the protecting the shit out of Benoit Yeah, here. dude, Benoit crazy protected here. I was surprised at how much they protected him. I think Shane saw a lot in Benoit. Yeah. Like, I think, I think so uh, like, he was, been, right? he was friends with him backstage, apparently. Like, oh, like, okay. Like, in the real. Yeah, he's um, Team WCW boys, you know? Yeah, yeah and he, he, he was, like, super, he, because he, I think Shane was, Shane was super more into the wrestling than he was, like, the segments. Like, he thought sure. the wrestling was the coolest part of wrestling. So, I think, like, Benoit was like the guy a for wrestler's him at that wrestler. Time. Yeah. So he was super into it. Shane gets up behind Rock. Like I said, fucking knocks him out crazy style. Um, he gets up, gets up behind Rock. Rock ducks. Benoit oh. brains Shane with his fucking chair and he takes that shit that, clean. Dude, that's I legit wrote all caps Benoit brains Shane with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, he takes him it's, out crazy. It is awesome. Uh, Stephanie runs out here to check on Shane because that's her brother. Yeah. Uh, Triple H is also here now, and he tells Stephanie to get the fuck out of the <laughs> yeah, ring. Yeah, he's not concerned about Shane. He's concerned that Stephanie's here to look at Shane. Yeah, come on. Chris Benoit's <laughs> out here. Get the fuck out of yeah, the ring. Yeah, come on, man. What are you going to do? So Triple H and Steph roll, literally roll Shane <laughs> out of the, the ring. ring. Yeah, roll One him. One side to that, the other. That's that's what VIF did to Chris Danger in DPW. <laughs> they rolled his ass out of the ring. Keep the yeah. on one side. <laughs> uh, JR is pissed that they are not bringing a new ref out. Here's Come your on. world championship match. There's not a fucking ref Get out here right here. now. Are you kidding me right now? It's the ref's I'm been about out. to start choking Jerry Lawler. <laughs> Jerry oh my God, look at his <laughs> red panties. Oh my God, look crazy. at Stephanie's pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so Rock Irish whips Chris Benoit into Triple H. And of course that oh, pisses no. Triple H off. Because he did it on purpose, of course. Yes, yeah, so of course Benoit did that on purpose. And Triple H is also hurt from the match he had with Kurt Angle. Benoit then swings on Triple H, <laughs> misses Triple H's jaw Jackson 2K style on the rope. Yes. Turns him around. Rock bottom. Aww. Earl Hebner's here. Three count. Rock retains the title. Big pop. Triple H is still on the apron talking shit down to Benoit. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> uh, Rock goes up. He, uh, he hits the pose with the title on the fucking buckle. Him and Triple H have a stare down. And then all of a sudden, Kurt Angle runs down. <laughs> Kurt Angle runs out, clotheslines Rock, and then attacks Triple H. Dude, yeah, dude, this is crazy. Out. Yeah. Yeah, Benoit and Angle are now stomping the fuck out of the Rock in the corner. I mean, they're stomping the <laughs> shit out of this dude. <laughs> yeah, Triple H saves, uh, I think, not saves, but he attacks Kurt because he fucking hates Kurt. He stops Kurt because he wants to kick his ass specifically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. 
So yeah, he starts kicking his fucking ass, and then Steph gets in, and then she goes up to Kurt Angle and slaps Kurt Angle. Slaps the shit out of him, too. Kurt says, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, legit. So what are you doing? And he's arguing with Stephanie here. They're both going fucking back and forth. And Benoit walks up, and he looks at Kurt, and he goes, what are you doing? He said, that's Stephanie McMahon right there. Yeah, what the hell are you doing? He's like uh, confronting him about it. How dare you? And then he goes Benoit mode. Dude. Benoit grabs Stephanie <laughs> and headbutts Stephanie. <laughs> he legit grabs her by the head and fucking headbutts her and she fucking collapses. I've never seen anything like this before. I've never I seen was, any. I was I've never seen away, a dude Tony. headbutt a girl like that before. I've never seen that. Dude, the crowd was, reaction was beautiful. Like they were like, <gasps> oh, Yo, shit, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, JR Lawler. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That's Holy fucking Stephanie shit. McMahon. Guys, martial law here. I'll be a son of a bitch. Her titties are okay. You're a little China was naked. I'll I swear to God, you're going to die. <laughs> oh, you're going to die. <laughs> I guarantee it. So Benoit hit by Stephanie, and then Kurt looks at Steph afterwards. Benoit just leaves, by the yeah, way. Yeah, fuck yeah, he leaves. He's I'm done with his shit. They're protecting the fuck out of Benoit. I, they are. They definitely, like, don't later on but like no there are some spurts where like they really give benoit a lot and this is one of those times i think benoit was all always protected because like his matches were so good that like even if he lost or something his performance allowed him to still the fans were like ah you know what they wanted to believe in him yeah his performance was enough for me to go right you know he's giving it a go right wrestlers out there that's all it takes sometimes is the crowd just has to be like this guy gave it everything he got. Yeah. If you I have enough intensity in trying tonight, if, if someone booked you to go out there and get fucking destroyed, as long as you showed enough intensity and fucking passion and heart, it doesn't really matter. No, you know it I mean? doesn't at all. Until we do it nine weeks in a row, 10 weeks in a row, <laughs> pay-per-view cycles in a row. Yeah. Then maybe at that point it does matter. There's but no for the one yet. match there, yeah, you can make it, you can make yeah. it happen. You know what I mean? Um, and Kurt looks at Steph. And then he just fucking leaves. He his music plays and he just leaves. He leaves Steph laying there. And he that's says, it. "Oh, that's how I'm supposed to leave." Oh shit! <laughs> Show's about to end. Gotta get out of here. I gotta go. TNN style. Yeah. What a crazy way to end your first show on a network. Yeah. Fucking uh, switch to TNN and attack Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is uh this is crazy stuff. A lot of Stone Cold on this show. Uh, fucking crazy ladder match. The funniest X Pac. Jericho match of all time and the best probably. Yeah, probably. probably. I, 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 I imagine they've had a good match together, right? They had to. Yeah. Yeah. WCW, you think so. right? They had some sweet bangers. <laughs> yeah, there, six. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the the Regal Stunner was so goddamn good, man. I'm so yeah, happy dude. That was that awesome. That was on this show. Yeah. Well, it was a fun show though. I liked it. I liked yeah, this episode. It was fun. It was good stuff, man. Uh, but yeah, that is it for this episode. That is it for uh, the debut of Raw on TNN. 